And welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to our third broadcast of the night. We wrapped up with the Asia region qualifiers for EPT Spring, followed by the European qualifiers, and now we are here with the final qualifiers available, the Americas. The final region here to determine who will advance on and who will be a part of the main event for the Americas region. Oh boy, I'm of course your side VIP and with me. I'm joined by the lovely people in the chat, by my plushies, and by all of these amazing players. It's a little bit bittersweet. A little bit of a bittersweet broadcast here today. Exclamation mark B in the chat if you guys want to have a look at the back of yourselves. If you're familiar with the Cranky Ducklings, then you'd be a little bit aware that we are not just a casting team. We're not just a team of casters. We are a team of players as well. And we have a couple of players taking part in these qualifiers. We had, you know, Oreo, for example, taking part in the Asia regionals. Meanwhile, we have three players that are here, a part of the America's closed qualifier. We have Dolan, we have Ryu, and we have Eric as well. All three players. They're amazing. They're beautiful. They're my boys, Papi. They're my boys. I do have a lot of love for all three of them. And uh, for many others even as well, as we've been casting Starcraft for a very long time, we have made some fond bonds with a lot of players out there. Unfortunately, though, if you look at the brackets, they're all playing each other. <laughs> they're, I, for none of the admins, Papi, shaking my head, este ice scar, shaking my head, shaking my head. All of our players are facing each other. In the first round, we have Ryu versus Eric. Of course, Ryu, the Peruvian Zerg player, the Street Fighter himself is up against Eric. What does Eric stand for? Endurance, righteousness, intellect, and kangaroo. The F in Eric stands for fear because he has no fear. Our two Zerg players are going to be facing off against each other uh, in the first round, which is, again, very bittersweet. It does guarantee one of the Ducklings to make it into a qualifying match, but one will advance on, the other will fall down. Meanwhile, who do they face off against? We have Dolan versus Rob. Dolan versus well, Rob, winner of this series, goes up against the winner of Ryu and Eric. So all three of our players are all in the same portion of the bracket, fighting for the same qualifying spot. I'm, I'm shaking my head. <laughs> I, I, I sh shaking my head, Bobby. Ay, ay, ay. Not like this. So, uh, yeah, as a result, we're going to be diving right on in, and uh, our first match is going to be Dolan versus Rob in a Terran versus Protoss matchup. The TVP is here. I am ready. Here we go. Whew. As we dive in to our first best of three. Um, again, I would have loved to have casted Eric versus Ryu, but I... I don't want to cast my boys fight each other. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to see them fight each other. No. Fun fact, I'm pretty sure Eric and Dol sorry, Eric and Ryu faced each other last season as well, or last year. I remember casting them against each other in the closed qualifier. And there's just something about these admins. They don't like the ducklings, but they, they want them to fight each other. Shit. Ay, ay, ay. So I wish the best of luck to Eric and Ryu. They're going to be facing off. We will not be casting them, but I'm sure they're going to be casted by another caster out there. Meanwhile, we're diving into our best of three. And spawning in the top left-hand corner of Oceanborn, we have the American Terran player representing the Cranky Ducklings as he is one of our own. It is Dolan. The Danger Dolan himself. And spawning in the bottom right-hand corner, we have his opponent. We have the American Protoss player, the yellow Protoss representing Root Gaming, it is Rob. Game paused. Ooh, and it looks like we're getting a bit of a pause here. Hopefully everything's okay. It looks like a hotkey issue. Aye, aye, aye. But hopefully this will be resolved shortly. And thankfully the pause is happening at the start of the game before anything happens. So nothing is being disrupted. Nothing is really uh, being disturbed here. So our players can just, you know, get into or fix up their issues and get into the game itself again thankfully there's no pause happening in a big fight at all okay well they're ready game resumed. they are ready to go vamanos puppy vamanos also it is a uh, fun fact it is 7 a.m here in the morning uh we've been casting all night we've been literally casting all night almost non-stop since 9 p.m yesterday Oh boy, we've we've almost reached that eight out. Sorry, that twelve-hour mark. We're almost there, Pap. We're go we're gonna get there, hundred percent. We are gonna get there. I'm here for it. I'm ready for it. Let's go. And I'm so excited to sleep after this. 
whether it's dreams or nightmares, it will depend on the outcome of some of these matches. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. See in the chat, Eric Fan Club here. We got jumped, man. Ah, we did, we did. Again, um, I'm sure we're going to be casting some more Ryu and Eric uh, in the upcoming matches. As a reminder, again, the winner of this series faces off against the winner of Eric and Ryu. So we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. As Rob ooh, is going for a proxy across the map to kick things off. Okay, SCV Scout is going to be coming in. Dolan, he does check that ramp. At least initially, he does a gimmick to the Scout in the main base. We do have the gateway. We do have the, shield, the cyber core. Sorry. Second pylon is missing. Zelda is going to be coming out first. And Dolan is he aware of what's going on it is gonna be a double gas opener okay double gas opener out of dolan which does mean a faster factory we are setting up here on one base and dolan upon seeing the lack of production buildings he's checking oh my god dolan with the reads he checks though barely does check he does confirm that there is a proxy stargate out on the map not a gateway not a very committed proxy now a proxy stargate leads into oracle harass and shouldn't be leading into an all-in. It looks like Rob should be expanding back at home off the back of this. Is just opening up aggressively here to kick things off. Dolan staying on his one base. Going for a 1-1-1. This is very aggressive. This is very committed here. A very delayed command center from Dolan. Pylon has been thrown down. Zealot has arrived. Dolan, he's fully walled up here with the with the bunker. But um, this feels like a one base all-in. Uh, this is looking very committed. We're going for... We're not going for the Oracle. We're going for a Void Ray. Oh, my God. We are setting up here for some Shield Batteries. And there it is. Shield Batteries are on the way. Rob, he's going for Proxy Void Ray. What year is it? It feels like 2020. All over again. Here we go. Now, a big reason why this build is making Resurgence is because of the nerf to the... Vo to the I almost said Void Ray. The nerf to the Cyclone. Because the Cyclone has been changed, it's no longer as robust as a defensive unit against something like a Void Ray. So, Vikings are required. Vikings are on the way. You have the Widowmine getting set up. Shield batteries are amassing. Shield batteries are on the way. Lee fogging forward here. Void Ray going to be able to knock down the first Depot. First Depot is knocked down. The Mind Shot is going to be going up. Oh, does connect here with the Stalker. Not on the Void Ray. A good connection nonetheless does kill the Stalker. More Shield Batteries are amassing. Viking has arrived. And a Viking cannot range the Void Ray. We do have to kite though. Do have to kite our hearts out. Shield Batteries keeping that Void Ray topped up. Second Void Ray does make it out. Ooh, and behind this, we're getting two additional Vikings. We have a tank on the way as well. Ooh, Wood of My Shot is not going to go off. Doesn't reset. Oh, the Adept does commit. A bit of an oversight there from Rub. Adept is going to be going down. And you can see that we're running out of shield battery energy. We're running out of energy. The Void Ray at two activate the Prismatic Alignment. We do go for the Cyclone. Repairs a little bit too late. Cyclone goes down, but a big overextension. The Void Rays go down. And just like that, we have the tanks. We have the Marines. And that is not Nocturne's Pylon. Oh my god. How many shield batteries are being kept powered by that? Oh my god. Six, seven, eight shield batteries. By the way, the Pylon is going to be going down. And everything gets depowered. Not like this. The Vikings are going to have Void Rays get shut down. GG gets pulled. And Dolan takes game number one. GG. The hell just happened? GG. <laughs> well played. Dolan, he survives the all-in. Again, when I saw the proxy Stargate, I assumed it was just going to be... It was just going to be Oracles, but based on the reaction of Dolan, I assume that he has a bit of a reputation or he has a history with Rob as both players are from the land of the Americas. I'm sure they're very familiar with each other. And uh, from there, Dolan did hard react to it, did commit here to defend against the proxy Void Ray. As we saw, what's important here in the defense is that Dolan only made the one Cyclone. Remember, remember what we spoke about, how the Cyclone was changed because of that Massing Cyclone isn't ideal against Proxy Void Ray, so if you happen to be in this position, really what you need, the bunker, you need to pull the boys to repair, and Vikings. You need that starport, you need those Vikings, and to get into the tank is ideal to take control of the low ground, to take control of whatever's left on the ground as well. So a very, very good reaction by Dolan. Clearly, he has been in that position in the past many times, and he is well-practiced, and now we're getting into game number two, spawning in the top left-hand corner of Site Delta. We have one of our own quack in the chat, as we have one of the Cranky Ducklings. It is Dolan. 
leading the series one to zero. Oh, look at that duck. Quack, flappy, quack. And spawning in the bottom right-hand corner, we have the putter. We have the American Protoss player whipping out some cheese in game one, but alas, it fell on its face. Can we bring it back? Can we force the ace match? Can we get some more out of these players? Representing Root Gaming, it is Rob. Here we go. To the death. Oh, they're fighting to the death, Bobby. Oh, no. Leave the ducks alone. Smooch. Uh, as we are going to be opening up double gas here, getting ready for what looks to be potentially another proxy as the probe is moving out. Meanwhile, back at home, Dolan opening up double gas. This does allow for a faster factory. If we so needed to, we could go for a factory into Starport once again. My eyes, though, are on this probe. Where are we going? What are we throwing down? Probe is moving out across the map. Once again, it is going to be the Zealot first. So far, this looks like the same build. Oh. This so far looks like the same build. This might be another proxy Stargate. This might be another Void Ray Rush with the shield batteries. Oh boy. Uh, we'll see if history repeats itself. So far, again, thankfully, because of the double gas opener, we're able to get into a Cyclone early on. Dolan, this time, though, has Command not SCV scattered. Uh oh. No SCV scout here out of Dolan. There is the proxy Stargate. It is going to be the same build two games in a row. This time, Dolan is going to be in the dark, though. He is going for his Reaper scout across the map. He is going to be missing the initial proxy, but he will get across. Once he does, he will confirm that the pylon is missing and that the tech is missing. Ooh, as he does get swiped by that zealot in the center of the map. Thankfully, Reaper will get across. Adept uh, does pop out, though. Rob, his goal here is to deny the scout. And the Reaper does confirm the lack of expansion. Uh, CC on the high ground, no starport. Again, this defense from Dolan is going to be a little bit shakier. It isn't going to be as clean as game one. But he does come across the proxy. Big scout here out of Dolan. He does get eyes on the Stargate. Ooh, the supply block. A bit of a wasted corner boost there. Pylons are still finishing up. And here we go. Now the Void Ray's on the way. A brutal supply block there by Rob. We're going for the probe, and the probe, is it going to go down? It does! Probe goes down, but two shield batteries are still on the way. Widowmines are amassing as we speak. Starport is still on the way. Bunker is done. Oh, and it looks like Rob is going to try and bait out that mine shot with the Adept. Yeah, we take note of it. We do back off. Yeah, Widowmine getting in position for the Void Ray. As the first Void Ray is about to pop out. Boys are being pulled to repair. Ah, uh, the supply block. Oh, this is brutal. This is an even bigger supply block for Dolan. Again, the game getting very chaotic for both players. We're trying to bait out that Void Ray, trying to drag it into the mine shots. Alas, unable to. Uh, Cyclone and Viking are on the way, but they are late. Void Ray is going to take a bit of hole damage, potentially. Uh, but again, if we had a bit of a faster Cyclone or, or Viking, we could have we could have punished it. Oh, oh my god. Mind shot not quite going up. Almost. Second Void Ray is coming out. And here we go. The repairs on that depot are real. Mind shot is it going to go up? It looks like we're targeting that Void Ray. Big connection. Void Ray takes a lot of hole damage. A lot of hole damage here on the Void Ray. Vikings have arrived. Cyclone as well. We are within range of at least some of these shield batteries. Behind this, we have the tech lab that's going to be for the tank. Tank is on the way. Ooh, but we take down one of the Vikings. The repair's not in time. That was brutal. The mine has reset, though. Yeah, we are just trying to repair and top up. But again, as we mentioned, this, this defense isn't as clean as we saw previously. With a mine going to be zoning away some of those void rays. First or second Viking has arrived. Yeah, we're going for the depot. And that is going to supply block. Yeah, big supply block here for Dolan. Two lose one. You can see we're trying to bait out that mine shot. We're trying to drag the army over. Tank has arrived. Uh, depot is being topped up. Dolan still supply block, by the way. Get a shield battery. We get one of the shield batteries, and we are now up to four Void Rays, soon to be five. This Void Ray count is getting insane. Now, thankfully, because of the tank, the shield batteries were not able to get any closer. So far, the repairs have been on point. Dolan is holding. 
Dark Shrine on the way as a follow-up. Oh my god, okay, Rob. He's cooking, bro. He's cooking. He is cooking here. Widow Mine is gonna be repositioning. We do try to focus it down. Mine goes down. Big pick off there by Rob. Gets the Widow Mine. Second tank has arrived. Now, we do have two orbitals. So we do have potentially access to scans. With that second orbital. Reaper will manage to get away. He's going to be threatening the bases here of Rob. Rob is expanding. It looks like he has given up on trying to break this position. And Rob is transitioning and trying to get into a longer game. Ooh, deeper goes down. That will supply block Dolan. The Vikings are going ham. Marines, they do push on forward. They'll try to get the army over. But again, shield batteries, they keep everything alive. Reaper does confirm the expansion. Now Dolan knows. He knows that he has to break out. Does have to break out. He has to be a little bit more proactive here. He will he will eventually be able to break free. Void Rays, they try to go for the tanks, but we punish the Void Rays. One of the Voids goes down. DT is waddling in. Do we notice? We do. Oh my god. Uh, we forced a bit of friendly fire, but now we're aware of the Dark Templar. Dolan did notice. Another DT strays in. Oh, oh. Gets a Marine. Going for the tanks. Do we have a scan? Oh, not yet. There we go. We do have a scan in the end. We do clean up that Dark Templar. Another DT on the way. Can we deny the warp in? Oh, we deny one. We don't deny the other. Yeah, we have a scan though. DT gets shut down. And now Dolan can expand. Remember, he did already have his orbital. He's going to be able... He has a decent worker count here. Slightly behind here in workers. But can expand. And we have a game. Whew. We have a game. Things were quite intense. And uh, I was getting very concerned for Dolan. Not going to lie. I was quite concerned. Especially when the first Viking died. Um, I was terrified. But alas, Dolan... He does have his Raven. He's got his Missile Turret. that gets another Dark Templar. As I say that, Rob is going for the main base. Sharking around. What can he pick off? He can go for the add-ons. Ooh, Stim. Stim and combat shields are exposed. And Rob, he's going for the main. No vision here by Dolan. He has no idea what's coming his way. He's ready at the natural, not in the main base. Ah, Stim is so vulnerable. And that would be a very nice pickoff. That will delay the push. That will delay any kind of move out. Back at home, Robbie's going for a gateway explosion and getting a couple of Archons up and running. Going for the forge. Stim, it's halfway. It's more than halfway done. Combat shields will finish. Scan reveals saturation, but we do notice that the Void Rays are missing. Uh, but Dolan, again, he is going to be rotating over towards the main base. Uh, uh, thinking about it. Is Stim going to finish? Like, these... Oh! They're coming in. Void Rays, they are stacking and they could go in. We're so close. We need a couple more seconds. Stim, it's almost done. Rob, he could have he gone for this long ago, by the way. He could have gone right for it. And he would have targeted it down. There we go. Void Rays are coming in. And Stim does finish up in time. Oh, we targeted down a little bit too late. Literally seconds too late. We go for the main base. We're going for the orbital. But we should be able to repair. Yeah, we're going for the Raven. The Raven goes down, but we get one. We get two. We get three Void Rays for one Raven. A good trade for Dolan. Again, if Rob had just gone in a couple seconds sooner, if he had just gone in initially when he was just parked outside the base, he missed his timing. He missed his window. Stim is done, and we're pushing. And now we are down to one Void Ray. That's the problem here is that Rob, he didn't just not deny Stim, but he also lost three Void Rays. And now what is this army? We have three Archons, a handful of Zealots. Charge is done. But we have three tanks sieged up. The army is coming in. A decent surround. Mind Jump's going to be going off. We clean up these Archons. Tanks are going down, but the Marines, it looks like we have too much on the ground. We clean up the Archons. We clean up the Zealots. And we can keep pushing. Instead of going straight for the kill, straight for the natural, we're going for the third base. We're trying to make sure we get some secure damage here. Vikings do lift. We go for the scan. Yeah, 
and Dark Templar does go down, and we do take control of the third. And we're chasing down the probes. And again, imagine, like, if there was no Stim, Dolan doesn't push. Dolan, he probably stays at home at that point, waiting for Sim to finish. Goes on the scan, takes down the Dark Templar. And the third base falls. Big pick off there. Dolan, he can keep fighting. He can keep just chasing this down. Rob turning back at the same time. Double drop into the main. Dolan is now lacking tanks, but oh my god, he's still just in the face of Rob. Doesn't want to stop. Doesn't want to slow down. Lacking is going to fall, but we've already cleaned up the Stargates. We don't, we don't care about any Void Rays. Not anymore. As we don't quite focus on the shield battery. Ooh, a lot of Marines are going to be going down. We do get one of the Archons. We do focus on that shield battery. GG gets called. It's just too much. And Dolan will take the series 2-0, advancing on to a qualifying match. GG. GG, well played. Oh my god, Dolan will take the series here, 2-0. to zero. I was a little bit concerned. Game 1 was clean, right? Game 1 was a solid game there by Dolan. Uh, game 1 was a solid game out of Dolan. Here in Game 2, it was a little more back and forth. We saw Rob trading quite well with his Void Rays, able to take down some, able to take down some key units, able to contain, able to expand behind it, get into a longer game, get into Dark Templar. And he had some opportunities as well that he that could have gone a little bit more in favor of Rob. The big moment, of course, was potentially denying Stim. Um, I do think that if he was just a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more assertive, if he had gone in a couple of seconds sooner, like, sniping Stim would have been huge. It would have been massive. To delay it, to even preserve some Void Rays, maybe we snipe Stim, then we are able to get the hell out of there, able to recall back home, save some extra Void Rays, have a stronger defense, and the game progresses. I'm not saying that Rob would have won the game from there, but the game would have gone on and could have had a different outcome. Could have had a different outcome there. Regardless, GG, well played. Congratulations to Dolan. My condolences to Rob as Rob gets knocked down to the lower brackets to face off against another opponent. Now, thankfully, this qualifier is double elimination. So if you are a fan of Rob, don't worry. He does have a second life. He has a second chance does have a second chance. Meanwhile, Dolan is going to be waiting in the next round. He's going to be waiting in the next round, and he's going to be waiting for his next opponent. Who's it going to be? As a reminder, it's going to be another duckling. It's going to be a team kill. Feels bad, man. I mean, this does mean, this does confirm that we will have a cranky duckling in the main event, you know, which, which that feels good, man. We, we will have one duckling in the main event. I would like all of them in the main event. <laughs> well, I would I would love them all to be there, but unfortunately. Oh, as I'm dying horribly. Unfortunately, because of the seeding, they're all facing off against each other. And only one will make it through here. As he's waiting for either Ryu or Eric. And Ryu and Eric, they're out of game. Ryu and Eric are out of game. Okay, and fun fact. Uh, Ryu and Eric, they're mid-series, and they're in the ace match. Oh my god, ah, feels bad, man, feels bad. Yeah, papi, guy. Yeah. let's go, let's go. We have some duckling on duckling action. The winner of this series will play against Dolan in a qualifying match. Who is it gonna be? Eric and Ryu are all the way, they've made us all the way to game three. All the way to the ace match here. Let's go. Oh boy. Here we go. So we missed out on game one and game two, as of course, <laughs> as of course, um, as of course, we were busy casting and covering Dolan versus Rob. We'll leave a message. Oh. 
I need to know that we're ready. Um, but yeah, we were busy casting Dolan versus Rob, and now we're here to determine who plays against Dolan in the next round. Again, it's a little bit bittersweet. My heart bleeds a little bit here. I love both of these players, and I mean, clearly they are well matched. They're going to the ace match. They're tied up. And uh, yeah, we will see who will advance on into next round. Now, at least thankfully... You know, both these players have a second life in the lower bracket. They will be able to keep on fighting and go for another chance. Um, so they will be able to progress their tournament life here. But here we go. We're diving into game number three and spawning in the top left-hand corner of Amphion. We have the Brazilian Zerg player. One of our own representing the Cranky Ducklings. No bias on this channel, by the way, of course. No bias. What does he stand for? He stands for Endurance, Righteousness, Intellect, and Kangaroo. It is Eric. And spawning in the bottom left-hand corner, we have his opponents. We have the Red Zerg player. We have the Peruvian Zerg player living in the land of Italia, by the way, representing the Cranky Ducklings. It's the Street Fighter himself. It is Ryu. Here we go. Ryu versus Eric. They have faced off in the past many a time. They're both from the Latin American region, Brazil versus Peru both very active in the or they both were very active in the online latin american tournament scene back when it was a more of a thriving environment nowadays both ryu and eric are, are more part-time is what i will say both of them have been you know playing and trying out some other games in their free time as have a lot of players to be fair and now they have dabbled their toe or dipped their toes back in starcraft once again and it's like riding a bike especially zvz both players have their own unique kind of play styles when it comes to ZVZ. You can see here Eric going through 15-15, 15 hatch into a 15 sporting pool into a delayed gas geyser. This is a very safe build, a very safe build out of Eric. With this build, it does mean that his link speed is late, but he gets faster queens, faster queens, faster links. It does mean that against something like an early pool, like a 12 pool or a 13-12 or a pool first or a gas first, Eric, he will be very safe against it. Now, this traditionally would lead into two base roach. Because, because this gas is so late, and because Ryu is about to start link speed um, once he gets 100 gas, Eric, he would typically skip link speed. You'd skip link speed, you'd wall off here on top of the ramp, and get into two base Roach, or two base Muta, two base anything. On top of that, specifically on this map, it is very easy to expand and take a third base. Reason for this, welcome everyone to Amphion. On Amphion, you have these this area here on the left-hand side that is completely closed off. Unless you mine through these minerals, and or if you break through these rocks, this area is completely cut off from the rest of the map, which means it's quite difficult to actually be aggressive and be assertive here at this area, which means you can expand freely and take almost a free third base. So I'm curious where we expand as Ryu is going for the linear third base, a much more traditional third. There's that link speed that we spoke about. Again, because Ryu went for a standard opener, because we already have plenty of gas to work with, link speed is on the way. And we spoke about it, Eric, he should be skipping link speed, but we'll see if he does. We do have a scout coming in. Ryu, he's trying to get a read on what's going on. He does confirm that there is no link speed yet. That is a piece of the puzzle. Ryu is trying to piece this together. Ooh, across the map, Overlord goes down. Nice pick off there by Ryu. Again, this Ling is being quite pesky, quite annoying. Is going to be shut down. The Ling does fall, and now Eric, he can get into his tech. What do we go for? Do we go for a fast lair on two bases? Do we go for a wall off into Roaches? We are going for a third base. That I was not expecting. Okay, so we're going for a third. Um, comparable timing with the third base of Ryu. I mean, Ryu's third is ahead, definitely. And there is that Roach Warren. I assumed it was going to be two base Roach. The reason why this third base is exposed. Without Ling speed, defending this third base is gonna be difficult here. Ryu, he's making Lings. Let's go. We have Lings on the way. We have four Lings in production, and Ryu is gonna be applying some pressure to this third base. Eric has no Bailings. Eric has no Ling speed. Defending is gonna be a little bit difficult here, but Ryu, he's only applying some light pressure. He's only moving out. Oh, I spoke too soon. 12 more Lings on the way. Like Ryu, he smells blood in the water. He sees weakness here and he wants to punish this. Meanwhile, Eric is rushing to his roaches. He's trying to cut corners, trying to rush into roach production. Ling's applying pressure here. We could even try to surround these queens. As more Ling's are on the way. More Ling's are amassing. 
Yeah, and there it is. We cancel the third base. Eric, he knows he cannot defend. He cannot hold on to it. That's why I was surprised to see the third. Ling Zay do try to bust into that natural base. Clutch transfuse. Roaches are on the way. And we do hold. Eric does hold, but now we have a bit of a give and take. On the one hand, Eric, he, you know, he's quite nicely getting into two base Roach. But Ryu has a third. He has a worker lead, and he can drone up and saturate his base, and he can extend that economic lead even further. So in a longer macro game, Ryu has the advantage. Meanwhile, we have a slightly faster lair for Eric. On top of that, he went double Evo Chamber, double upgrade. So his roaches will be stronger. He will have 1-1 one, one, as opposed to the 1-0 of Ryu. So Eric, he will have the stronger roaches, but he will have the worse economy. You can see Ryu already joining up to 50. Eric stuck at 42. Links continuing to threaten that third base. Behind this. Oh, I was not expecting this. Okay, Eric. He's taking up into a Hydra Den. That is a bold move. Again, Hydras are very fragile in ZvZ, but a handful of, of Hydras can really add quite a bit of complexity to your army. As the Roaches are moving out, Overlord Speed has kicked in. Ryu gets a full scout. He does get eyes on the Hydra Den. He sees, he knows. Meanwhile, Eric, he faked out a move out. What just happened here is that Eric, he moves out, the Overlord spot the move out, and then Ryu makes Roaches instead of droning. Meanwhile, Eric has been droning. So because of that little move from Eric, he catches up. He's caught up in drones. We have an even worker count as a result. Still isn't mining from his third base, but there's the Maynard. He does saturate that third and now has a comparable economy to Ryu. Again, because these overlords, there's nothing to contest against them. There is like a lot of like ebb and flow and there's a lot of mind games going on when it comes to the movement of your army. Trying to use vision and scouting information against your opponent. As we see Ryu pushing on the right hand side, going for a double drop on the left. Basically, Ryu doesn't intend to push in on the right, but he's distracting Eric. He's trying to keep Eric's attention on the right while he goes off with that drop. Plus two is on the horizon. Hydra upgrades are on the way. Double drop is coming in. Yeah, we're headed straight for the main base. We're going for the queen. Queen is going to get sniped. Drones are under fire as well. Very nice damage here. At the same time, Ryu is going to be committing on the right-hand side. He's, going, he's trying to pull Eric apart. So far, is doing well. Seven and drones go down. Now, Eric does have some Hydra, so he can pin these overlords back. At the same time, we do see Ryu pushing in, but... Eric's in position. Remember, Eric does have the upgrade advantage. So Ryu doesn't commit. He pulls back. He's going to be pulling back from here. These overlords are going to be trapped because of the Hydras. Hydra range is on the way, which will help when it comes to dealing with said overlord. And Ryu instead, he's going to be doubling down on Roach Ravager. So in a head-to-head -head fight, I want to fail. Oh, as we snipe one of the Drupal Lords. Again, that's what we spoke about. The Hydras do, get, or do keep this pin, and yeah, there's no way out for this Dropper Lord. But I do want to favor Roach Ravager in general. Hydras can have a really hard time actually impacting these fights, but it does depend on the engagement. It does depend on the angle of attack. We do snipe one of those Overlords. Keen eyes out of Eric does end up getting that Changeling. And both players are maxing out. Both players are maxing out. Eric, he never got into plus two armor or plus two carapace. Bear that in mind. But he does still have plus one. Will we go for the contamination? Let's go. Contamination here on the base. Infestation bit is done. We're working towards Hive. Fun fact, Ryu did have a nickname back in the day. Back when he was a much more active player. He was the Lurker King in Latino America. And there it is. Hydrogen is on the way. Hive is on the way as well. This is for one thing and one thing only. Lunkers. Lurker Tech is on the mind of Ryu. Now, Eric also has access to Lurker Tech if he throws down the Lurker Den. True. For now, just Roach Hydra. We do see Ryu rotating over on the right-hand side. Eric trying to keep up. He's trying to keep up. Both players have maxed out. Looking at the units tab, both players are on 63 drones. So even worker counts, even base or even army supply as well. Just a different composition. Oh, Eric gets caught out. Yeah, a couple of free shots come in. Roaches are getting picked off. So a rough trade there for, for Eric. 
Better engage there initially. Lings are trickling in. But Ryu wants to get rid of his Lings. And there's that Lurker Den. Lurker Den on the way for Ryu. We spoke about it. He wants that Lurker tech. He's almost there. Meanwhile, Eric getting a better concave. Shaves off some roaches. Rotating over towards that third base. Ryu trying to keep up. He gets caught out. And Eric, he wants to commit. Force back with the Biles. A couple of Hydras being peeled off here towards that natural. Biles once again forcing Micro here out of Eric, forcing him back. But we have the better concave. And these Hydras, they add quite a bit of DPS here to the army. And is it going to be enough? Eric, he gets in some of the Ravagers. He's cleaning up the army. Again, these Hydras, they add so much. GG gets called before Ryu can get into those Lurkers. Eric is able to break through. Does take the series 2-1. to one. Advancing on to a qualifying match. GG. <laughs> a very, very tense game there. Again, Ryu was taking up towards those lurkers, but that Roach Hydra army had so much extra DPS available, and Eric was able to outposition Ryu. Towards the end there, you saw that he was able to get a bit of concave, was able to rotate around. GG, well played. And with that, Eric advances on. Ryu, he's going to get knocked down to the lower bracket. But as a reminder, Ryu has another chance. He has another life to fight back. I want to believe he can. Do you want to believe he can? Best of luck to Ryu in that bottom half of the bracket. Again, I want all three of our players to make it through. I wish them all the best of luck. It is a shame that they have to play against each other. Again, it is a, a little bit smooch. A little bit smooch, not going to lie. But with that... We have our next series. We have our qualifying match. It is Eric versus Dolan. Here we go. And things are about to get wild. Things are about to get very interesting here as uh, we do switch on over, as you can see here. Dolan versus Eric in a best of five. Now, both Dolan and Eric are very creative players. They're very creative. They are not standard by any means. In saying that, Eric, like, even in that ZBZ, the place off of Eric was not standard. It was not of the norm for him to rush into that third the way that he did, for him to go for, for the 15-15, for him to go into the Hydras as quickly as he did as well. Like, this is all, this is all more stylistic and unique to Eric was able to come out on top again eric he is a zvz specialist as well we have seen eric time and time again beat dark in esl open cups specifically esl open cup americas if you're in the chat if you were here watching last year you, you would have seen eric take down dark week after week um for a period of time which was very wild and very impressive again zvz like no other but uh his zvt i would say is eric's weakest matchup his weakest matchup is against Terran, but he still has a lot of very creative and very uh yeah interesting play styles here available so does dolan dolan he has some very unique dolan builds um that he does come up with himself you know some cyclone based all ins hellbat based all ins i i expect this series to be chaotic <laughs> i expect it to be very chaotic eh? and we like it chaotic papi we like it chaotic let's go let's go As we are getting ready here for some predictions. We will have predictions ready here for our qualifying match. As a reminder, it's going to be a best of five. It's missing our players. And uh, while we're getting ready here, while we are getting ready uh, for our best of five qualifying match, we're going to be going into short break. We're going to be having a very short break here. Uh, and as we get into said break, we are going to be just taking a moment to allow our players to conduct their vetoes. When they are ready, we'll be diving into our next match. Take this moment, get some water, get some snacks, get some or stre stretch, you know, posture check. Posture check in the chat, you know, no slouching. Look after yourselves, and we'll be back soon 
with our next series.
and welcome back everyone welcome back hope you enjoyed that brutal ost as we have returned with our first qualifying match of the ebt spring america's region closed a qualifier which of these two players will make it through into the main event into the main america's regionals for ept spring we're here for it i'm here for it we are here to bear witness and spawning in the top right hand corner of crimson court we have the brazilian zerg player the blue zerg representing the cranky ducklings it is eric and spawning in the bottom left hand corner we have his opponent we have the american terran player the bread Terran representing the Cranky Dogs as well as this is a team kill. It is Dolan. The danger Dolan against the kangaroo himself. Let's go, Poppy. Let's go. As we're opening up with a Turax Reaper build. Okay, it's been a while. It's been a whole minute since I've seen this. This it has kind of fallen out of fashion these past couple of months. But I'm happy to see it here once again. So Turax Reaper here from Dolan. Eric going for what looks to be. Uh, it looks to be a hatch gas pool standard opener from our Zerg player. Meanwhile, if you are in the chat, predictions are open. Predictions are open. Place your bets on how you believe this series will unfold. Good luck in the chat. In the chat, best of luck. Uh, I am not going to bet on any of them. Of course, I can't because I'm, I'm a mod in the chat. But regardless, I I want them both to make it through. That that's all I want. I, regardless of who wins here, I want the other to make it through as well in another qualifying match we will be following our players as best we can no bias by the way no bias not at all but they better qualify <laughs> here we go and again two x reaper here out of dolan is going to be sending his reapers across the map again this is a build popularized by Bjorn um quite some time ago last year two years ago even it was november of 2022 uh, when Bion and Maru were really whipping it out at DreamHack Atlanta and uh, embracing it. And of course, uh, Bion did run with it throughout 2023, did refine it, and Dolan is going to be bringing it out here and now. Now, the goal of this build is to have an abundance of Reapers early on. Three Reapers is the ideal, and you contain your opponent. The goal here is to dance with these Lings, contain the Zerg player, and delay the third base for as long as we can. It's not really about killing too much. It's not about killing drones. If we can, that's ideal. But more about just keeping the Zerg player on the back foot. As now we're going for the add-ons. For the add-ons, third Reaper has arrived. We have a third CC in the main base. Dolan going for a macro build. Very economic. It is going to be a 2-on-1. One, one. It's going to be 3CC, 2-on-1. One. Meanwhile, the Reapers do make their way into the main base. Can we get a queen? Good reaction so far to Eric. He does maintain his drones. Let's keep them alive. And Dolan is going to be forced out. It's going to be forced out of the main base. Rotating around once again. This time he gets a drone. Ooh, but did he overextend? The Lings, they do come in first around. Good target firing here by the Queens. And even though we killed one drone, we lose every single Reaper. Ay, ay, ay. Not like this. Looking at the Unisol tab, one drone for three Reapers. That was not worth it for Dolan. Again, he was baited in. Oh, no! Across the map, we deny Stim. Not like this. The Lings, they get across the map. We get on top of the add-on. Stim is denied. Ay, ay, ay. And this is, the, this is the risk you take. The risk you take when you do go for something like this is if you lose your Reapers, you lose control of the base. Sorry, you lose control of the map. And you lose control of your add-ons as we deny Stim. We deny the reactor over and over again. Oh, my. Not again. Ay, ay, ay. This is a brutal here. The constant cancels, the constant denies. As behind this, Dolan is getting into a much more economic follow up. But uh, this will delay any kind of 2 1 1. Ideally, you want Stim lined up with these medevacs. We're going for an add on swap, the factory with a starport to get into med medevac production to move out across the map with Stim. But Stim is oh so very delayed. It may even be worth. Uh, delaying the Adam swap as well, and I don't know, maybe getting into Hellions for map control. Uh, we're going for the swap. We're going for those medevacs. And this is just a brutal position here. It isn't just stim delayed, but without the reactor, this does impact the amount of marines that we have. And Dolan is stuck at home. He's stuck at home, and Eric is free to expand. Remember, his third base was delayed, but now it's getting up and running. Now Eric, he can make up for his late third by droning up as heavily as possible. 
Queens are rotating over a creep is spreading. We are in Crimson Court, and this area on the right-hand side is pretty well defended. We spoke about it, I think it was on Amphion, where on this map, you have to mine through these mineral patches or break through these rocks to gain access to this area outside of drop play. So a very safe and secure base for Eric. And our tech of choice is not Lich, it is not just Ling Bane, it is Ling Bane into Muta. Now, what's interesting here is that we got the lair first, then we prioritize the Baneling Nest to get into Baneling Speed. So a very safe opener here out of Eric going into a delayed Spire. Like usually when people are going into Mutas, you delay the Baneling Nest and you get into a Spire as quickly as possible to invest into those Mutas. But Eric, he's playing it out very safely here. Very safe and secure, even making a couple of safety Banelings before we invest into Mutas. So Eric, he's respecting Dolan quite a bit here, and he just doesn't want to cut any corners. Doesn't want, doesn't want to take a risk against Dolan. That stim is now finally done. Combat shield's now on the way. Double drop is moving out. We do manage to clear up some of these tumors. We do manage to pick up a couple of tumors here before pulling back. Dolan, alas, is unable to really deny any creep here, at least on the right-hand side. Eric going to be able to get it up and running. Plus one air attack is on the way. Ooh, big commitment here into the mutas. And Dolan is establishing his third base. His economy is not looking too bad. Unfortunately, he's unable to hinder Eric. He's unable to be active. He's unable to threaten the bases, unable to threaten the drones. And barely able to threaten the creep tumors. So even though, yes, sure, Dolan, he's getting his third base up and running... Eric is left untouched, and that is a scary thing. Usually the Terran needs to be in the face of the Zerg. They cannot allow them to just drone up to 80 without any issues. And Eric, he's cutting workers at 65 to invest into said mutas. Mutas that have been unscattered. Dolan is in the dark. He has not seen the Spire, has not seen the mutas yet, and is in for a rude awakening. As the Medivacs are forced to pick up, Mutas are amassing. The question becomes, do we use the Mutas to chase down these Medivacs, or do we go, do we go straight for the economic damage? Oh, God, he's not looking! He's not looking. Big Bailing connections. And Mutas are making their way into that main base, or into that natural. Ah, Mutas have arrived. SCVs are going down. And Dolan is racing back home, sending everything back here to the natural. And gets a Muta. So I was managed to get a muta, but that was nine SCV kills. Ay ay ay. Eric rotating around. He wants the tank. I won't be able to get it. So there are Marines in position. As we managed to get a couple more SCVs here at the third base. The turret isn't done. Uh, the turret not quite done. We bleed out another muta. We find a tank. Well worth it here for Eric. Thors are on the way. More turrets being thrown down, but Dolan is just contained to three bases, and behind this, Eric has been droning. Or Eric is droning. Seven more workers on the way. Upgrades, infestation bit, hive tech, adrenal. Eric can get into whatever he wants from here. It does take down the turrets. Now, finally, with the help of the Thor, we should be able to zone away these mutas. No dancing with that Thor, but the Ling Bane is coming in towards the third. Yeah, tanks are exposed. We get one. We get two. Two tanks go down. Bailings are trying to roll in. A good positioning here by Dolan. He will hold the line. But he will also lose his third base. 19 SCVs go down. The third base has been compromised. We get into the main. We take down. We deny drilling claws. Ay, ay, ay. And Eric, he's just... Wreaking havoc here, having his way with the main base, going for so many more add-ons. Just like the add-ons he killed before. Uh, not like this. And again, you can see Dolan, he's trying to build up. I mean, he knows that he can get a more efficient army out. 2-2 two -two is about to finish. 2-2 two -two is going to be a big upgrade window here, a big upgrade timing for Dolan. But even with 2-2... Two -two, Ah, there's still just so much working against him.
Again, from here, Eric, he has his hive. Ultra Cavern. Ultra Cavern's on the way. Adrenal upgrades on the horizon as well. Not the best upgrades here, as we're still working on plus one melee. So the upgrades of Eric are lacking. But the tech itself is solid. And even if Eric were to back off and max out to get into some Ultras, Dolan, he still needs even more time to recover. And Eric should not be giving him that time. Eric should not be giving him that time as the mutas they are going to be threatening that main. Now, uh, once again, going for the add ons. Uh, doesn't quite get the tech lab. He does get the reactor. Let's get the reactor. Could be expanding, taking another base. Getting a fifth. Again, creep is, creep is engulfing the map here. Spreading all around. Towards the fourth, towards the fifth. Eric he takes down some of those winter mines. So far, again, solid, solid control here from Eric. Does head back into the main base. Gets another two turrets. Gets turrets. Gets reactors. I'm loving the Thor drop here from Dolan to try to keep up. But Eric has maxed out. And now here come the Ultras. Now we do need a couple of seconds to get into Kindness Plating. That is still on the horizon. But Eric, he may just choose to go in even without Kindness. Plus two is finishing up in a couple of seconds. Ideally, Dolan, oh, sorry, Eric doesn't want to hit an anti-timing. As Dolan is maxing out. Like, Dolan, he's been absorbing a lot of these blows. He's been slowly turtling up, getting up to his fourth base. Worker count is comparable. 71 SCVs plus mules. Dolan, he's still in this. I mean, Eric has had a lot of freedom. Uh, does magic evokes the Thor. He's going to be able to bring one and a second Thor down. Eric rolling in towards the planetary. Failing to quite make it in. At the same time, big fungal of the army. Uh, we fungal the marines. We collapse on top of it with the, with the ultras. GG gets called. And Eric, he will take game number one. GG. Again, Dolan just dragged out of position there. And Eric was able to take advantage of him. But uh, honestly, it was just a rough start. It was a rough start to begin with. Where we had... It was just a rough start to begin with. Where we had uh, Eric shutting down the Reapers. Because the Reapers got shut down, he was able to get on top of the add-ons. Deny Stim, deny the Reactor for so, so long. And that just threw a wrench in the works. That just delayed the overall build and the timing of Dolan for by so much. And Eric had so much freedom as a result. And uh, again, this is a matchup that is so uh, difficult to keep up with there. This is a matchup where like any kind of deficit early on snowballs out of control. Like the early game is so crucial. The early game is so important here in StarCraft in general. And it looks like we are being joined by another fellow caster. Oh my god. Obrigado, papi. Fala, galera. Cosmos is going to be casting alongside us. Cosmos, of course, the Brazilian caster, has joined the series. Do you love to see it? has joined the series here and here we go we are going to be settling into game number two as a reminder it's a best of five plenty plenty of opportunity here to bounce back especially on this map i would not be surprised if we do something crazy like embrace mech from the side of dolan but for now we're getting into game two and spawning in the bottom left hand corner of alkyone we have our brazilian zerg player the blue zerg representing the cranky ducklings leading the series one to zero it is eric and spawning in the top right hand corner we have his opponent we have the american terran the american terran player the red terran representing the cranky Dolphins as well as this is a team kill 
having a very rough start in game number one, but I'm sure looking to recover and bounce back in game two. It is Dolan. Here we go. As uh, Dolan is looking to set up another two racks opener. We have a racks on low ground, a second SCV comes in, and the second racks is going to be thrown down. Interesting choice. Um, winding it back, if you remember the beginning of game one, Dolan also went two racks Reaper. He went two racks Reaper, and it was a little bit lackluster. His Reapers killed one drone, and he lost every single Reaper, and that was the beginning of the end. That was just the beginning of the house of cards falling, you know, the dominoes that were falling one after the other, and... Eric was able to snowball out of control from there. So if we are going to Axe Reaper, we do need to babysit these Reapers a little bit better. We do need to preserve them. My apologies here as... My uh, my apologies, this was a gas opener. I did not realize that the gas was delayed. And this is going to be not two Axe Reaper, two Axe Marine. This looks like a future build. We have seen Future do something very similar. Where he goes, he opens up two racks, basically like um like a two on one variation. He should be expanding behind this, going for the CC. There's a give and take here. There is a give and take. Now, the upside of this build is that when it comes to your stim timing, you already have a lot of marines. You are building up your marine count a lot faster, a lot earlier. So it does mean that your sim timing is gonna hit harder as a result as we take down an overlord. Nice pick off there. Uh, but yeah, the stim timing in your medevac drop is going to hit that much stronger, that much harder as a result. The downside of this build is no scouting. No scouting information. No SCV scout, no Reaper scout either, which means if Eric was going for a Roach Rush, Dolan would have no idea. Dolan's moving out just to take control of the Zelnaga. And he is going to be moving out a little bit further, threatening that third base. But again, in general, Dolan doesn't see much behind this. We're going for a 4 axe follow-up. Bion, is that you? This is very old school. It's been months since I've seen this build. It's 2 axe into a 4 axe follow-up. This is going to hit like a truck. This is very committed. This is not all in. You can transition out of this, but it is committed nonetheless. Now, what is happening here? I was talking about a stim timing. Yes, there is going to be a stim timing. There is not going to be a medevac timing. Basically, we're not going for factory. We're not going for the starport. We're not going for medevacs. We are building up a death pool of a marine army, and we're soon going to be moving out with stim and combat shields. Again, combat shields should be starting up soon. Um, this is going to hit very hard. If Eric doesn't see this coming ahead of time, if Eric doesn't realize what's going on, if Eric undermakes lings, and if he undermakes queens, then this could end the game. This could just straight up kill Eric. Now Eric's taking his third base. He is droning up quite freely. So far, so good. But again, if Eric is too greedy, this build will will punish him. Again, for those that are maybe curious about seeing more of this build, uh, Bjorn used to do this quite regularly. Uh, Bjorn and Cure. This was two seasons ago on um, God, what was the map pool? Royal Blood. Um, on the map pool of Royal Blood, you would see it a little more often. That was the start of last year. I say start of like last year, like April, uh, yeah, a year ago, essentially. But uh, a lot of the Korean Terrans were incorporating this as a follow-up to the two racks. There it is. Now we're transitioning into the factory, into the starport. Remember, we spoke about this. This is not an all-in. We are hitting a strong timing with Stim and Combat Shields. The Marines are moving out. And what do we have to defend? We have a, a good amount of Marines. Only four Queens. Ooh, the Queen count is very low. Low Queen count is dangerous. Dolan, he does move forward. He checks the lack, and he does confirm the lack of third. Bailings are in position. So Eric, instead of having a high Queen count, he goes for a fast Bailing Nest. Dolan, he sees the army. He wants none of it. He's rotating around. He wants to check the third base. Does scan, does spot the bailings. Dolan, does he go for the dive? With good enough target firing, he could try to make this work. But no, Dolan backs off. Doesn't like his chances, doesn't want to risk it. He will retreat. Now, what's important about what just happened? Yes, Dolan, he doesn't end up trading. But look at the drone count. Eric, 
he has been cutting workers. Like, he, he, he has been delaying his joining. He's still only on 48 workers. He's still just now saturating his third base. Eric doesn't have the best economy, and he's rushing into a very fast Hydra there. Ooh, very fast Hydra. So, Ling Bane Hydra out of Eric. But again, his droning has been a little bit lackluster. And more importantly than that, is that Dolan did not throw away his army. There was the same timing, and he passed it by. And he retains all of his Marines, and this means he can hit another timing instead with plus one, with tanks, with medevacs. So Dolan, he's going to be reinforcing this. We have tanks on the way. Starports are on the horizon as well. And now Dolan, again, this, this timing of this push is going to be a little bit later, but has more flexibility available. More maneuverability with that medevac. Again, so important that he retained this army, didn't throw it away. Did not throw it away here. As Eric, he does check the wall. And he has actually going to be able to bust in. Oh my god, the Ravens, they crash into the wall. We break on into the natural base. Tank is late to siege. And the Marines, they do race back home. The tank is under fire, but we should be able to save it. Oh, this wasn't really worth it for, for Eric. He did force back the army, but he didn't get the tank, and he threw away a lot of mailings. And for what? For a reactor. As Eric is amassing another army. Again, a low drone count here by Eric. The wings get caught out. Good start by Dolan. He's going to be pushing. Scans ahead of time. Very important, just because Eric has been known to rush into Burrow. Doesn't have Burrow this game. We can see Eric trying to set up a surround. Setting up a sandwich. And Dolan from multiple angles. Here we go, Eric. He does collapse on this. Bailey's they will connect. Tanks are sieging, but a big engage here by Eric. He cleans up the tanks, cleans up the Metamax, and he takes the fight. That was insane. Honestly, Dolan, in a head-to-head -head fight, could have won that. He could have taken it head-on, but he was caught out. The tanks were caught out. Metamax as well. A brutal surround. We clean up the Metamax, and Eric, he has the momentum on his side now. He's pushing out across the map, and Dolan, he lost everything. Ay ay ay! A brutal fight there for Dolan. Everything has been lost, and Eric, he can try to go for the kill. What do we have to defend? No bunkers, two tanks, a handful of marines. Eric, he checks, he confirms that the third base has not landed. That's all he needs. No third. Eric, he's content with that. He backs off, and he's taking his own fourth. So four bases against the two of Dolan. Third base will soon be taken, to be fair. But uh, any kind of buildup that Dolan had, it's not there anymore. Not, not anymore. Not anymore here. Ooh, as another medevac goes down. Ah, these are brutal losses here for Dolan. These have been brutal losses. And Eric, he's taking control of the map. You know, with the death of these drops, that means that Eric is free to just spread his creep, to expand, to drone freely. Tech up, Hive is on the way, Infestors, Lurker Den as well. Eric can do as he pleases. Do as he pleases here. You can see that Dolan's still being active, and he knows he, he knows he has to be. That's the problem here, is that Dolan, he cannot just relinquish map control, despite the fact that things are looking so dire. Once again, Hydra's from behind. They don't get them in effects this time. Meanwhile, Liberator towards the north, another Liberator towards the south. We get five drone kills. That's okay. It's a good start. Here's a good start. We do need more, as ah, there is a spore in position. Liberator gets a couple of workers before going down. Does get a couple of workers. You can see the creep, it's, it's getting out of hand. It's getting out of control. It's getting out of control at this point. As Eric, he's encroaching upon the would-be fourth base. 
Dolan gonna try and take it, but I don't see a world where you can hold on to this fourth. Should not happen. Should not be able to. Yeah, so the armies are gonna be dancing with each other. And Eric, he actually hasn't been droning up too much. We spoke about this before, but this is a problem that Eric has, is that he is not one to drone up too freely. Dolan is on 81 SCVs. Eric, he's only on 70, down to 68. Now he's droning, but honestly, these workers, they could have been made earlier. This is um one of the big weaknesses of Eric, is that he is not one to, or he's one to just delay his droning. Because of that, he's not as ahead as he should be. He's not as far ahead as he should be. But tech-wise, he's there, right? We have Lurkers, we have Hive Tech, we have the Hive Upgrades, Vipers have arrived. Army sizes are comparable. Can Eric break through? Lurkers, they do Siege. And the Bains, they crash into the Planetary. Planetary goes down. Planetary does fall. We go for the scan, we yoink in the tanks. We get one, we get two, we get three. Big pickups there by Eric. Denies the fourth. Takes down some of those tanks. And Eric doesn't have to force the issue. The reality is that Eric, he can just back off, remax again, and go for another push. You have a couple of fungals being thrown out, so you get in one more of those tanks. It looks like Dolan does take a fight. He does force Eric back. Good tank volleys. Again, this time his tanks were within range. And the scary thing here, though, is that Dolan still doesn't have a fourth. His fourth base is still not back up and running. So Dolan, he has a finite amount of resources. And he is running out of steam. Dolan is going to be on siege, he's going to be backing off. I mean, he knows that there are vipers out there and that blinding clouds are a big possibility. Has to be very careful with how he sieges and how he spreads out these tanks. Vipers, yep, they're ready. They are ready here. As Eric, he goes for a ling run by, does find some SCVs. You got like one worker, if that. Yeah, we go for the yoinks. Two tanks go down. We do get another and another. Eric just take control of that center. 14, 18 as he's got it. Oh my god, these things, they just wreak havoc. Left uncontested. 21 workers have fallen here at the third base. This should not have happened. Insane amount of economic damage. Again, Dolan, his attention was split up. He wasn't able to here as Dolan is going to be pushing here on the right-hand side. Oh. We're going game, not looking too bad. Too bad here as we get another lane run by not like this. Oh my god, as once again we get a full mineral line here. Dolan just doesn't have the supply to defend back at home. He's turning back around. Unfortunately, there was nothing in position. We get another 18 workers. Aye, aye, aye. Now Dolan does have the, the army supply lead. But he's had that for quite some time. He's just been unable to make use of it. Whenever he moves out, he comes back home. He's just forced back home. And at the same time, double knight is swarming to the main base. Looks like we swatted it, though. Dolan is on the way. Uh, a couple of lurkers are going to be coming up, but the army's in position, and yeah, Eric is going to be throwing these lurkers away. 
Not that it's straight from the Zerg player, but at the same time, ooh, we do collapse here on the left hand side. The Night of Swarms are immediately a distraction, and we get so many tanks here. Three, four, five tanks go down. So far, Eric just doing a great job here, just trading efficiently, pulling apart the attention, and just picking away at Dolan. Another nice little finish, nothing quite comes out. Dolan down to 56 workers. Eric, he's on 92. Jesus. He's getting to 3 3. Uh, is getting into 3 3 at this point. Looking towards his upgrades. Lurker tech. From here, we could even go for an Ultra Cavern. That's what I would personally like to see is just take up into an Ultra Cavern, into a Spire, into a Greater Spire. Just make sure we have access to all the tech. As Eric, he does spot the would-be fourth. Sees the army. Eric rotating around, knocking down those rocks. He knows he cannot allow this base to get up and running. Not like this. Not for free. And we'll see if he can. See if he can break this here. Once again, double Knight is swarming to the main. Dolan is repositioning his tanks. The boys are being pulled. And we do end up sending a couple of drops over. And in that moment of weakness, we do collapse on this base. Ah, command center goes down. We get on top of the tanks as well. And GG gets called. Eric, he does noble out of control. He breaks on through and he does take a 2 0 lead in the series. GG. GG, well played. And this was not a bad game out of Dolan. Remember, the initial build, I feel like the execution was done quite well. It was a 2 racks Marine into a 4 racks follow-up on two bases. It was able to get across the map, trade quite well, uh, transition into his eventual tank push with his, with his Medivacs. Unfortunately, there was a big fight. There was a big fight that occurred where Eric was able to get a full surround of the army, coming from multiple angles, connect with his banelings, and completely shut down not just the push, but also the tanks and the the tanks and the medevacs as well. It was just a complete cleanup of the army, something you don't see too often, and um, something you don't see too often. And yeah, from that moment, Dolan was on the back foot. Dolan, he almost recovered, as you saw. Dolan was getting his fourth base, and he was. Uh, just yeah, able to settle back into things, but um, uh, unfortunately here, Dolan is up against the wall. He's up against the wall. He has to fight back here and now, to force that or to to extend the series and have a chance at the ace match. The pressure is now on Dolan. The pressure is now on Dolan. Here we go. As Eric needs Onomas one more win here to qualify for the main event. Dolan needs to fight back here and now to keep that dream alive. As a reminder, the loser of this series will have another chance in another qualifying match in the lower brackets. I'm not sure who they're going to be facing off against. The bracket is progressing. After the series, we can take a moment to catch up on the bracket itself. As it looks like all the upper qualifying matches are underway. Uh, meanwhile, for those that are curious, Ryu is actually playing against Rob in the lower bracket. They're mid-series as we speak. They're in that ZVP. So I do wish Ryu the best of luck. As he is up against his opponent. Um, I'm uncertain where the loser of this series gets dropped down to. I'm uncertain. 
We'll have to piece that together. A couple of players are already raiding. Are already raiding here. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like Dolan is asking for a moment. Dolan, he's asking for a moment here to catch his breath and to recover his mental state a little bit here, which makes sense. It does make sense. Well, we're more than willing to wait. Dolan just needs a moment here to recover. And then we're going to be getting right back into the series. Oh, boy. We're starting up. It's coming, man. It's coming. Uh, doesn't Dark also play often for a long time on 60 to 70 drones? Uh, depending on the play style. Um, specifically, what you're referring to is if Dark plays Ling Bane into Hive. If he plays Ling Bane into Hive tech, he will stay on a low drone count because the goal of that style of Ling Bane into Hive is for map control. Is that you get into you make an abundance of Ling Bane and you gain map control, you contain your opponent, and then you then after you're able to accomplish that, then you can start droning. So um yeah, Dark does uh, does similarly play that style from time to time. Going down. I think the Swords Eyes Nidus was worth it after all. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good move. Like, the Nidus was just a big distraction for Dolan. It was just a big distraction. He was able to get so much more done with that. They have similar aggressive styles. They do, they do. Um, yeah, when it comes to kind of this like low drone kind of style of play here, Mia Mike is another big one. Mia Mike, he also suffers from it, where he can look so damn good, but because Mia Mike stays on a low drone count, if he ever does take a bad fight, things can very quickly look worse for the Zerg player. That's something that I should emphasize, is that because of that low drone count of Eric, if he did trade too poorly, then he wouldn't be able to rebuild as quickly, wouldn't be able to remax, and the game would look very different. It would look very, very different there. Oh. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how this all comes together as we're getting into game number three on Amphion. Let's go. Here we go, we're getting into our next game and spawning in the top left hand corner of Amphion, we have our Brazilian Zerg player. The Brazilian Zerg, the blue Zerg, representing the Cranky Ducklings. What does he stand for? He stands for Endurance, Righteousness, Intellect, and Kangaroo. He needs one more win to qualify for the main event, for the regionals of EBT Spring Americas. It is Eric. And spawning in the bottom left hand corner, we have his opponent. We have the American Terran player. The American Terran, the red Terran player, representing the Cranky Ducklings, as he is also one of our own. It is Dolan. He's down in the series. He has to fight back here and now to extend the series to force the ace match. Again, there's a lot of pressure here on Dolan. I want to believe he can bounce back. I know that he can take some maps, I know that he can take a series. But we'll see what we decide to go for here. What do we embrace? Where are we headed? And we have had already some quite interesting builds from the side of Dolan. From the side of Dolan. As here we go. Behind this, we do have uh, just a standard hatch gas pool opener. Hatch gas pool out of Eric. Okay, the Lord is moving out. Likewise, Dolan going for a Rax expand. This time, a much more standard opener. A much more standard game from Dolan. Let's go. A much more standard setup here. As opposed to the 2 Rax Reaper that we've been seeing, or the 2 Rax Marine into 4 Rax. We 
do see that Dolan has been mixing it up quite a bit. And there we go, our Reaper is moving out. Again, we're loading into Amphion. We spoke about this previously in the ZVZ between Eric and Ryu. But of course, there are minerals that you can mine through to expand towards the left-hand side. A much more secure base expansion pattern that you can go for. Ooh, as Reaper does get into that natural base, going to be applying a bit of pressure, going for the drone. Reaper is forced out, and what do we have in the main base? Oh, as he wants that drone. We'll get it. Drone goes down, and we make our way into the main as well. No, we're following the links. We need a scout. The Reaper. Ah, the Reaper is busy chasing those links, going for another drone. And we have not scattered. We have not seen that Roach Warren. Very fast Roach Warren here out of Eric. Now, Dolan, he does take note of the lack of saturation of the lower drone count. That is true. Lings are racing across the map. Reaper is forced to turn around. And the Reaper may have killed one drone. But Eric, he's going for the SCVs. He's applying quite a bit of pressure. It's going to be a 1 1 1 build out of Dolan. Okay. With a 1 1 1, we can get into a faster Banshee, for example. Be quite assertive. As Reapers are going to be dancing with these links, cleaning them all up. But behind this, Roaches are amassing. The roaches are on the way. And Dolan still doesn't know until now. Now he knows. Roaches, they have been revealed. Dolan racing back home, evacuating his natural base, pulling back into the main. Hellions are on the way. Cyclones are in production. No bunker. No bunker, but we do have Banshees. And bearing in mind, Eric is droning. Eric, he is droning up behind this. He's not all in. Roaches, they take down a Reaper. Good control here as Eric, he pulls back the weakened Roach. Deeper does go down. The Roach is under threat here, but we do manage to break out of... Oh, no, we don't! We pull back too soon. The Roach pulls back a little bit too soon. It is not saved. We managed to get the Hellion, but the, Ra the Ravagers, yeah, they're going to be forced back. They cannot keep pushing. Uh, behind this, Dolan going for a fusion. Oh, my God. Fusion core follow-up here out of Dolan. At the same time, we do have a fast lair on the way here from Eric. Settling on two bases, droning up, getting to his third. Spores are on the way. As a reminder, we have Spores on the way because of the Banshees. The Banshees were revealed. The Banshees were spotted. As with this tech lab, we're not going for an add-on, so we can head into Battle Cruiser production. And this can lead into mech. I'm feeling mech here. I'm feeling the mech, Papi is. The Banshee is going to be threatening the bases. As best it can. Is going to be threatening those bases. Is going to be rotating around. Cyclones, they have arrived. And there is that battle cruiser on the way. We get on top of the third base. We're looking for a cancel. Trying to at least. Eric is going to be able to hold on. Is going to be able to hold. Drone is going down. We do take down the Spore. Spore does fall. We're getting a lot of damage dealt here on the base. The base itself getting very low. As we are forced back, there are the additional factories. Again, it is going to be mech from Dolan. I expected it at least once in this series, and we have seen Dolan achieve quite a bit with mech in the past. And I wonder if Eric is aware. I mean, he uh, once he sees the BCs, it's a big possibility. Once this is a battle cruiser, he should know. Because that means that there are no medevacs, that means there's no support for the bio army. BC is gonna be telling towards the top left. Dolan is gonna be expanding. He's gonna be taking his third. BC is gonna be waddling in. He does go for a bit of a drive-by here. Gets a drone. The station bit has been thrown down. 
Oh, we're going for more workers, going for a queen even. Yeah, just drones for now. Getting six workers in the VC will waddle away. Floats on into the dead space. Pretty good damage. Six drones. Six drones for a bit of hole damage, and the VC can walk back home. Meanwhile, behind this, we do have the range upgrades in production. The Spire is on the way as well for Corruptors. Range upgrades are going to be for Roaches as we are going into Swarm Hose. Okay, that I was not expecting. Especially against BC. Okay, Swarm Hose is going to be on the way instead. BC catches the tumors. Does teleport back home. Yeah, we're building up a more traditional kind of army composition. We have a handful of cyclones initially, but now we're getting to mass tank production. Tanks and cyclones. And finally, Eric is going to be pushing. Moving out with his army. Oh, the swarm host, they are getting caught out though. We do pick off one swarm host. Meanwhile, the, that single BC now up to two. Two battle cruisers here in towards that natural. We go for the queens. Yamato is done. Yeah, Yamato is available. We do focus two of those queens down. Yeah, Corruptors arrive just in time. Not before the queens fall, but we're able to. Oh, good! We're able to get a kill on the BC. Oh, brutal loss there for Dolan. BC goes down. A bit of a supply block as well. Corruptors, they are on the way. They are on the way here. We do have a couple of Locust Waves coming in. And Eric is going to be able to hold on. Does hold on to the front lines. Corruptors, they do get into the main base. Locust Wave delaying the CC. As Eric, he's causing so much chaos, he catches the Hellion Cyclone. Hellion Cyclone gets caught out. Banshee going to be going down to the main. And the Corruptors, they force the BCs to look, to look back. Do you have a solid defensive line here with all these tanks? We're going to be able to hold on. Corruptors still being a nuisance. <laughs> this locals wave. I'm shaking my head. Just, you know, getting some value here or there. Get some value. Corruptors, they go for the... Planet series, planet series for the factories. BCs are going ham, and this is a bold move here out of Eric. He's going to be losing a lot at the same time. Does come in on the right-hand side. Drops is a force back. BC up, forces teleport. BC did go down. Not a bad trade here for Eric. This is amassing his army. Greater Spire on the way. We had to have a decent saturation here on 72 workers. Taking a fresh base, taking the hybrid base on the right hand side. Meanwhile, we do have a mech. We we'll make upgrades at least on the horizon for Dolan. We have, of course, Blue Flame. We have the new Cyclone upgrade. Just building up. What is it called? They they rename it, right? It's uh, Cyclone Engines, right? Instead of uh, sorry, Hurricane Engines instead of Hurricane Thrusters. Yeah, I was just trying to remember. As we do manage to fumble here, we do connect with the Hellion Cyclone. Good amount of them go down. 
That's still a good amount of tanks, though. We cannot commit. But the Broodlords. The Broodlords are on the way. There it is. Hurricane engines on the horizon here for Dolan. That will help with it when it comes to the mobility here of these Cyclones. Ah, but here come the Broods. And everything changed when the Broodlords did attack. They, they're coming, Bobby. They're coming. Yeah, the tanks say do not shoot off. We're not ready for this whatsoever. We have 11 Cyclones. Tanks are going down. Boars are on the way, but it takes time. It does take plenty of time to get into that. Here we go, the Cyclones are trying to break through the defensive line. Fungal will connect. And can we focus down all the Cyclones? Oh, we can focus down both of them. Most of them, there's two left. Two Cyclones remaining here. We're down to one. One Cyclone, Bobby. Oh, and it gets targeted. And now nothing shoots up. Broodlords, they're having their way with their pure tech... Sorry, pure tank army. That's a kill on the orbital. Not Jean. We are pushing in. It looks like Dolan, he has been broken. Again, with this Brutal timing. And even before that, we had some weird swarm host play. We had some... Just a very interesting play style here out of Eric. And that's what we expect out of him. As he leads the charge with the Brutalords. GG gets called. And Eric, he will take the series 3-0. Qualifying for the EPT Spring Americas Regionals. GG. Uh, GG, well played. Congratulations here to Eric as he does take the series 3-0 to zero, and he does advance on. My condolences to Dolan as he did put up quite a fight. And again, there were plenty of games out there or plenty of uh, opportunities where he, he was holding his own. Um, but uh, just a couple of things did go awry for him. And in the end, does tap out here, does fall at the hands of Eric. My condolences, but congratulations to Eric. Congratulations. Congratulations, and uh, yeah, with that, we are going to be settling into our next series. We're going to be following Dolan. Oh. We're going to be following Dolan here into the lower brackets. Eric, he's made it through, and we have some updates. We have some updates to go through here. Exclamation mark B in the chat if you guys want to have, have a look at the record yourselves. Looks like future to riser 3 to 0. Future also qualifies. So Future and Eric are the first two to qualify. Or Future, Eric, and Epic are the first three to qualify into the main event. Looks like Nina versus Foxer is still ongoing. I believe Nina versus Foxer is being covered by Dave Tester. I believe Dave is covering that. So if you want to tune in to that PVT, Dave has you covered. Uh, meanwhile, we are going to be heading down to the lower bracket instead where players are being eliminated. And my heart bleeds a little bit here. Ay, ay, ay. It was a brutal result. It went all the way to the ace match. I don't know what happened, but I don't know what transpired in these games. But Rob took down Ryu 2-1. Went to the ace match at least, but Ryu has been eliminated from the qualifier. My condolences to Ryu. He's an amazing player, and I do rate him quite highly. I do rate him. I do know that he could have definitely beaten Rob, but again, not so sure what happened. I would not be surprised if Rob cheesed him the hell out. Rob was very cheesy and very aggressive against Dolan earlier today. Would not be surprised if he did that against Ryu. I would say that Ryu's biggest weakness is early game cheese and all ins. Uh, that's where he does struggle the most. Like uh, Ryu put him in a long game, put him in a, in a mid game to a macro game, and he's looking like a beast. He's looking so damn good. But when it comes to early game aggression, uh, that's where he can be vulnerable and that's where he can be taken advantage of. So I would not be surprised if that was the case from Rob. Meanwhile, who does Dolan play against? That's what I'm curious about. Pili Pili takes down Chaos Fate 2-0. Uh, M. Canning takes down Inexorbit 
an, ex an ex ah, inexorable two to zero maple takes down apple uh, apple juice and it looks like we have our next series we have our next series we have our next match up here dolan he gets knocked down to the lower bracket and up next on the channel is going to be dolan versus peely peely in another tvp let's go Dolan versus Pili Pili is going to be coming up next. Uh, is Pili Pili on a team? Is he still on Genesis? Uh, let me just double check. Is Pili Pili still on... He is still on Genesis Gaming. Okay. There you go. We'll set that up. But uh, that is going to be our next series. That is going to be our next series here on the channel. We're going to be going on a short break while our players conduct their vetoes. And when we return, Dolan versus Pili Pili is going to be coming up next. See you then. See you then.
And welcome back everyone, welcome back, hope you enjoyed that brutal OSC, we just wrapped up with our first qualifying match of the night, or of this regional America's close qualifier, now we are here with our second qualifying match, another best of five between these two lovely players, and spawning in the top left hand corner of Oceanborn, we have the American Protoss player, the Blue Protoss, representing Genesis Gaming, it is a Pilly Pilly. And is spawning in the bottom right hand corner, but also sending out a couple of SCVs on the map because he's looking to meme things up. It is the American Terran player, one of our own, representing the cranky ducklings. He just got knocked down by Eric, but he is here looking to redeem himself. It is Dolan. Because we don't just have one proxy, we have another as we do move out with two SCVs. Probe Scout is moving out. And I'm curious how this all comes together. Oh my god. Okay, it's going to be one Rax back at home. We fully wall off as well with that extra Depot that should be thrown down momentarily. Dolan waiting a little bit longer. There we go. Depot is, Depot is thrown down. And Pili Pili is in the dark. He is in the dark as to what's going on. It is going to be three Rax Reaper, I imagine, from Dolan. I say I imagine. We'll see how he pieces this all together. Technically, it isn't too far away. We could go for Proxy Marauder alongside this. Yeah, Marine is on the way. Do we go for the Marauders? No gases have been taken. My apologies. It's just Mass Marine. Wait, what? <laughs> wait, 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 what? Okay, we're going for a gasless 3 racks Mass Marine here against Pili Pili. Very unusual, very unorthodox. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to NA, where things don't always make sense. Where Dolan, where his builds can thrive. I'm here for it. Show us what you got. Show us what you got. As there we go. We do have some SCVs. They can throw down bunkers, of course. These bunkers do not take gas. Boys are being pulled, we're all in, and we get we get spotted, we get scouted. Pili, he knows. Immediately, shield batteries are on the way. Big scout out of Pili, the boys have been pulled. It's all or nothing from Dolan. Again, he's upset, he's angry after that series against Eric, and he wants to try to vent here against his opponent. One of the Marines almost does go down. Now looking at the units, the units tab here, it's going to be nine, sorry, 10 Marines and 16 SCVs. Boys have to be pulled. Shield batteries are almost done. Oh my god, the shield batteries are finishing up just in time as well. Yeah, the Marines are dive on forward with three shield batteries, I believe. Pili Pili, he should be able to hold on. Yeah, SVs are going down. Marines are getting surrounded as well. We do still have a good amount of Marines, but all the workers are falling. One after the other. A good start of stepping here, but we're going to get surrounded. And Pili, he's going to clean this up completely. GG gets called, and Pili Pili takes game number one Whew. very quick game <laughs> gee gg well played apparently Pili does take the first game but this was a this was an odd one not gonna lie this is a weird one um it was so important so imperative that Pili scouted right the fact that he saw 
the SEVs, he saw the, the all-in coming well ahead of time. He was able to respond, able to throw down as many as those shield batteries as possible, prepare in time. Very good reaction, very solid response. GG. GG, well played. And with that... Pili does take a 1-0 lead, but I don't know how much we can really take from that, right? I don't know how much we can really learn from that first game. That was a little bit chaotic, that was a little bit of nonsense, and uh, I don't think we're going to be seeing that again from Dolan. But I believe we will be seeing some more proxies and some more cheese. 100%. 100%. As we're settling into game, numero dos. Here we go. Show us those sticks. Aha. Uh -huh. Kept. Here we go as we are getting into game number two of this best of five qualifying match and spawning in the top left hand corner of Site Delta, leading the series one to zero. We have the American Pro Dolls player representing Genesis Gaming. It is Pilly Pilly. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner, we have his opponent, we have the American Terran player, the Red Terran, representing the Cranky Ducklings, stumbling a little bit in game number one, but that's okay, you know, we can bounce back, I'm sure we have plenty more builds up our sleeve, it is Dolan. Here we go. The Protoss vs Terran does continue. And this time the Rax is at home. This time we are not proxying across the map. This time there's no weird all in off of one base. Uh, at least not yet. Not yet from either player. Pili Pili though after that first game I'm sure has been put on notice. I'm sure he's going to be keeping an eye on any kind of follow up here. I've seen that in the chat. Pure NA. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Let's go. As once again, two games in a row, Dolan, he does fully wall off here at the ramp. Uh, this is a double gas opener this time from Dolan, so he should be going for a factory. He has no SV on the map, but he's playing some mind games, essentially. He's trying to keep Pili Pili in the dark as to what is going on. Trying to ensure that he's not aware of what exactly Dolan is up to. As the Reaper is on the way, and the Reaper should shut down this probe before the probe can see much of anything in that main base. There's the factory. The factory is on the way. Now from here we can go into a starport and go for one base all in, but I imagine Dolan is going to be expanding. On a map like side Delta, you know, may as well embrace a longer mid game here and get into your natural. As Reaper is moving out. Reaper moving out across the map. Do you have that Twilight Council on the way? Okay, so it's going to be a Twilight Council based opener here at a Pili Pili. This should be for Blink Stalkers. How many gateways? Well, we've yet to determine that. We've yet to find out. Reaper gets denied entry into the main. Good positioning here with the Stalker. And Dolan is going for a Cyclone first. A very safe way to open up. Going for the initial Cyclone. Natural base is on the way with the command center from the main. And Pili Pili did not overreact. You know, there's no additional shield batteries. No big commitment into some units. Pili Pili is going to be safe. Oh, as a Dolan is going for a Rax before Starport. So this is a 2-1-1 variation. We could even throw down a third Rax before the Starport as well. And if we do, that could be indicative of a two base all in. We have very early tank production. This is going to be a very committed build here out of Dolan. And there it is, a third racks before Starport. Okay, so what's happening here? Because the Starport is so delayed, that means one thing and one thing only. We are building up a death bull of an army very quickly, very early on. We're delaying the Starport. We're delaying any kind of medevac production until it is time to move out. Now, we may even skip the Starport. Just skip the starport and pull the boys. And it could just be a two base all in. Just straight up two base all in. Or we can just go for the starport, go for a committed push, 
and expand behind it. Regardless, aggression is on the table here for Dolan, getting into, getting into tank production so early on. Behind this, Pili Pili working towards Blink. How many gateways is the question. We have one gateway in the main. We have two gateways here at the natural. Three gate Blink. A very safe build here out of Pili Pili. Three gate Blink allows you to gain map control. It allows you to be active with Stalkers. Doesn't mean you have to push into the bases. You don't have to be that committed. But you should be able to gain map control and be active and slow down any kind of push that the Terran has to throw at you. And this three gate Blink should lead into a third. Should it lead into a third base from here? As we're getting into combat shields, we're getting to stim. We have the bay on the way for Pili Pili. Okay, so he's going to be going for a bay before Nexus. So a very safe opener. This is going to ensure that we start up Colossus production, you know, just before we throw down the third. There we go. Third is on the way. And Colossi are going to be on the horizon. If we wanted to be more greedy and more economic, we would have thrown down the third base before the bay. But again, we can see here that Pili's just trying to be safe. Does delay his economy in favor of tech. Observer gets into the main base. Big scout here from Pili. He sees all three Raxes. He sees no starport. Now the starport is on the way. Again, it's very delayed. With this starport, we should be getting into Medirac production. And then we're going to be pushing. We are going to be moving out. And he goes down. We get eyes on the base. It looks like Dolan, he wants to try and deny this third base with this army. Even without Medivacs. Still possible, definitely. I mean, Stim is finishing up. Medivacs are on the way. Pili Pili, he does miss the move out, which means we're denying the base. 100%, we should be able to deny this base. Colossus is halfway done. Stalkers, they do get across the map. What do we have at home to defend? Yeah, we force the recall. And we dive on the oh, we dive on the base. Tanks they do siege. Shield batteries go down. Immortal wanders in. Oh my big overextension. The immortal gets thrown in the way. We kill the third base. Big pick off here by Dolan. A very successful push. And from here we can keep pushing. But there is a Colossus. Colossus comes out just in time. We get on top of the sentries. Oh, we are cleaning things up. Big losses from the side of Billy. And Dolan, he's snowballing out of control. This two base push hit like a truck. And Pili Pili was not outside the base to slow it down. He did not see it coming. Well, he's trying to collapse on this big target firing gear out of Dolan. He takes down the Colossus. There's one more left on the way. One more Colossus on the horizon here, but we take control of the natural base. Boys are being pulled. Big tank while he's going off here on the Stalkers. 15 probes go down. 21 workers go down. GG gets pulled. It's too much damage, and Dolan ties up the series 1-1. One one. GG. Get a much more solid game there out of Dolan. Uh, did go for a very interesting style. Remember, he did go for just a very committed two-base push. It was scouted by Pili, but Pili missed it. He missed the move out. He missed the push. Because of that, he, uh, Dolan was able to get across the map unscouted, uninterrupted, and wreak havoc on that third base. Very well done there. Very well done there by Dolan. A stark contrast to game one, to be honest. Game one left a little bit to be desired here in game two. Him to enjoy himself a little bit more. And uh, yeah, with that, we are oh, getting into game three. Game number three is on the way. It's going to be on Amphion. As, uh, yeah, it is going to be on Amphion, Amphion LE, one of the newer maps in the map pool. Let's go. One of the newer maps in the map pool here. I'm ready to sink my teeth into it. I'm ready to see what Dolan has to offer.
I'm ready for it. Uh, it looks like our players are asking for a small break. I, that's, that's all good. Does make plenty of sense here. Again, Amphion is the smaller map by air. Short rushes is by air. Does have access to these kind of safe base locations if you do mine through the minerals and do head towards the left-hand side. Curious if that's going to be the case here for our players. If they try to rush into that base or if they expand elsewhere. And again, we have a series on our hands. Again, I do feel like a lot of this is going to come down to Dolan. Like, he's a very unique player. He has a lot of builds up his sleeve, and we'll see how he plays it out. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he plays Mech at some point, or goes Cloak Banshee against Protoss, which is viable. We do see it from time to time. What does Dolan have prepared for Pili Pili? He had prepared catching up with the chats. Oh, that's a lot of emotes. <laughs> I, ooh, woo, papi, ooh, woo, ooh, woo. Um, meanwhile, do we have any other updates as well? I know the bracket is progressing. I believe all of the upper bracket has concluded. Yeah, we just got an update. Nina took down Foxer three to zero. My condolences to Foxer, but a big shout out to Nina. As Nina does advance on. And that means, yeah, we're down to just the lower bracket qualifying matches. They're all underway. It's this series between Dolan and Pili Pili. We have Riser versus M Canning in a PvP. We have Volts versus Maples in a ZVP. And we have Foxer versus Rob in a Terran versus Protoss. So I wish all those players the best of luck. Wish them all the best there in those matches. As we have yet to determine who will make it through. And here we go. Looks like it plays it back. Our players are back. They have returned. And we're getting into game three. Let's go. So it is 9 a.m. What does that mean? 12 hours. We've been casting for 12 hours, Bobby. Back to back to back. We made it to the 12 hour mark. I'm so ready for bed after this after this cast. Oh, I, I can feel it coming, Poppy. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be beautiful. Let's end it. As here we go, we're getting into game three and spawning in the top left hand corner. We have the American Protoss player, the Blue Protoss representing Genesis Gaming. It is a Pilly Pilly. And spawning in the bottom left hand corner, we have as opponent, we have the American Terran player, the Red Terran representing the Cranky Ducklings, tying up the series one to one in that last game. Forcing a tied series. Can he keep it up? Can he keep things going? It is Dolan. Let's go. Let us go, Bobby, as we are just easing our way into this. Again, once again, it's going to be a double gas open out of Dolan. And it looks like once again, he may be looking to wall off here on top of the ramp and to keep Pili Pili in the dark as to what is going on. There we go. SCP has been pulled and we are walling off. So cheeky moves here out of Dolan. And what's scary about this here, what's scary about this wall is that there was a game that Dolan did commit to a one base all in. It was game one. So Pili Pili, he knows that Dolan, he's willing to do it all. He's willing to just embrace chaos. Throw things at the wall and wait for them to stick. As we go for that marine first. Meanwhile, across the map. Just getting into our gate expand into Cybercore. Everything looking as it should for the time being. This is the area that we spoke about to how if you mine through these mineral patches, you gain access to this triangular third base location. And it is very safe and secure. You can only punish it by knocking down these rocks or mining through these minerals on your own side. And even if you try to come in from the left-hand side, this choke point is very narrow, very brutal to try to push into. So we'll see if our players do expand in that direction. Behind this is that factory on the way. And it looks like it's just going to be a factory into and expand. There it is. Command center is on the way. The 
Oh, sorry, I'm just coughing my lungs out. Huh. As looks like a probe scout came in, we were able to get eyes on the adults. So oh, Hellion production on the way. Reaper Hellion actually from Dolan. Okay, a little bit more old school. Reaper Hellion is kind of pre cyclone change, while it's a little more commonplace. Meanwhile, across the map, Pili Pili going for his tech of choice. Once again, Twilight Council. Once again, it's going to be Blink here from Pili Pili. In game number two, it was three gate Blink into a delayed third base into Faster Colossus production. So we'll see if Pili Pili does the same. Again, it's a very safe way to open up. We saw that, I mean, Dolan still snowball out of control, but that was less so because of the build. That was more so because Pili Pili did not see the move out. He did not see the army. had no idea that Dolan had snuck up on him and snuck up on that fourth base on the third. And so Dolan is going to be moving out. Pushing here on the right-hand side. Has the Hellion Reaper. The goal of this is to be able to get into a mineral line and to wrestle some probes. And we're going right for it. There we go, overcharge is pulled, but workers are going down. So far we get four workers. Not much more than that. Five probes in total. Deny at least one of those one of those units with neither Reaper. We shut down the Hellion. Five worker kills so far. We get cleaned up, but we did get a full scout of the main base. We saw the one gateway in the main, one more gateway on the way behind this. Ooh, two gate blink. Okay, two gate blink into a third. So a very economic build here from Pili Pili. The last game was a little bit safer. Here it's a little more economic, less active, less units to work with, less production, but a faster third. Faster third base here from Pili Pili. Behind this, Dolan is setting up here with his 1-1-1. One, one, one. This time there was no delay There was no delay in the starport. So he's able to get into his Raven, able to secure himself against Dark Templar. Stolen is trying to also piece this together as well and eventually be active on the map, eventually do, uh, do move out. Sorry, just stretching. Just trying to keep myself in this. So, uh, yeah, just a defensive position here from Dolan on two bases. Upgrades on the way. Stim, combat shields, plus one. Bit of a supply block there by Dolan. But he's building up. Meanwhile, Pili Pili, he's getting into his three-way setup, and he is not being punished for it. There's very little aggression here out of Dolan. I mean, he killed five workers earlier, but he is not really applying much pressure to the third. So it's going to be able to get up and running without any issue. And Pili Pili behind this is getting into, from Blink, into Charge, into Immortal Production, into eventually, I imagine, a Bay, into some kind of splash damage. Whether it's Disruptors or Colossi, yet to be determined. Scan will confirm the army. Pylons are being thrown down here to scout any kind of drop play. Pylon on the right, Observer on the left. And Dolan is getting a third TC, by the way. Not too much later. He's working towards his own third base. He's going to be moving out. Move out is spotted by the Observer. Pili Pili knows. And you can see Pili Pili respond. So big Scott there. From Pili. As Dolan moved out, so Pili Pili, he's just aggressively scouting, trying to get a read on where it is. It does spot the army. Uh, the army's not going to be missing each other. The tank's getting in a nice position. Wittermine's going to be covering those tanks from behind. And we are ready to sim on forward. Again, no Colossi, no Disruptors. Pili trying to catch the reinforcements instead. There we go, we end up catching some of those else at the same time. Pili Pili going for the tanks. Does go for the tanks. First tank does go down. 
Zealots are going to be cleaned up when we get both tanks in the end. Despite that, though, can we get on top of the Immortals? It all and he sims on four, dives on the Immortals, he gets one. One Immortal goes down. Mindshell goes off, nice split there out of Pili. But he will bleed out all of his Zealots. Yeah, he does escape with that Immortal. But Dolan, he traded well. We can get the resources lost tab here. Again, we saw Pili bleed out 25 Zealots. That's a lot of minerals. Alongside sentries, alongside an Immortal. The two tanks. And a good trade here by Pili. Pili? By Dolan. This is moving in towards Pili. Do you have a shield battery? Do we have any splash damage? Ooh, we do not. Still no splash damage. We have some uh, high tempo for feedbacks. We are pulling back. Ooh, big mind shot. Big mind shot goes off. Archon is on the way. Yeah, and we can see Dolan is snowballing out of control, just rallying everything across the map with Marines and Marauders. Dancing with these zealots. Pili Pili at the same time going for a big zealot warping into the main. There are reinforcements though. The reinforcements are on the way. The Protoss army does end up getting every single one of those every single one of those wooden mines. Wooden mines they will not reach that, but we do snap the immortal. Mortal was sniped and we're chasing this all the way back. Dolan just does not have enough. He's forced to turn back around. At the same time, 11 probes go down. Or 11 SCVs to the harass. And Billy, he survives. Uh, for, I'll be honest, I thought that Dolan was going to be able to break through, but the prison did so much to bring back the army to keep reinforcements at home. Pilly Pilly, he survives. Does survive. And this is taking an expansion, taking another base. I'm just waiting for the second wave here from Dolan, and this time it is hitting a little bit later, but this time it's hitting with high, te oh, high Templar? With Ghosts. We have Ghosts, we have EMPs. A little potential with this army as we move out. We do see the new moving in. Does get past that turret. We do get a big warp in into the main base at the same time. Dolan, I don't think he cares. I don't think he's too much of a concern, not anymore. Oh, massive mind connections here on the Zealots. EMPs as well in the Archons. And what do we have left? Do we have a shield battery? We do not. Oh, brutal. No shield battery, no overcharge. Boys are being pulled into their deaths. And from here, Dolan, he has enough to break through into the main army, into that core. Getting two of those, getting two of those immortals, not getting the third. Third immortal barely does survive. Barely does make it out. Disruptors are now on the way. Disruptors now on the way. Oh my god. Uh, as we managed to get a couple of SCVs across the map with these zealots. Uh, mainly in the main base. Worker counts are pretty similar. Uh, Dolan, of course, I want to give him the edge here in the overall economy because he has mules. Does have those mules. Pili Pili, Pili, Pili coming back in. Not quite getting another SCV, but Pili Pili, he can go for a warp in. Meanwhile, across the map, Dolan is committed. He's going to be committed here. You can see the disruptors desperately trying to get a, get a connection. Oh, good target firing there out of Dolan. We have one never left. Never remaining. Do focus on the Archons, never goes up. Oh, we graze the army. But again, Dolan, he has too much. GG gets pulled. We don't even finish up the fight here as the writing was on the wall. And Dolan, 
will take a 2-1 lead in the series. GG. GG, well played. Dolan, he needs one more. He needs, he needs Uromas to make it through into that main event, into the Americas Regionals. Meanwhile, Pili Pili has to fight back here and now to force that ace match. GG. Oh. But uh, again, yeah, we did see Dolan really not uh, having too much issue there once he was able to get into the swing of things, once he was able to get into his groove. As we are getting ready here for our next game. Where are we headed? Where are we headed here? Game number four. What is that map of choice? What is our map of choice here? Again, we are close to the end of this series. Whether this ends in game four, or whether this goes all the way to the ace match, we're here for it. Nobody, no bias, Flappy, no bias. None. None here. And here we go. We're getting into our next game. We're getting into game number four. It's going to be on Crimson Court. Oh. Oh, let's go. <laughs> Shout out to our players, by the way, for, uh, looks like we're going to be remaking the lobby. Oh, good. Oh, good. I was going to let it slide. Um,. The lobby was made without uh, WCS Game Heart or Observer Plus. I was more than happy to just just let it ride. Um, okay. Here it is. Crimson Court here as our next game. Crimson Court's an interesting one. has a very direct attack path. There are bases that you can expand to towards the left and right hand side but you do have to mine through minerals or break down rocks to actually gain access to those areas uh, so if you don't spend time on that then you know, this is uh, going to be an interesting one as our PVT continues and we're loading into game no matter what and spawning in the top sorry the bottom left hand corner of the Crimson Courts, we do have the American Protoss player. The American Protoss representing Genesis Gaming down in the series. He has to fight back here and now to force the A's match. It is a Pilly Pilly. And spawning in the top right hand corner, we have this We have the American Terran player, one of our own, representing the Cranky Ducklings. It is Dolan. The danger Dolan himself. Let's go, Fafi. Let's go. Here for it. I am ready for it. See, so I don't get why all Terrans don't leave one bunker behind every mineral line. Yeah, there are some Terrans that don't want to leave supply back at home, but um, there is there is benefit to it. Definitely. Is a benefit to it, depending on whether it's the main base or at the third or at the fourth. As Pili Pili coming in with a perp scout once again, Dolan gonna be fully walling up here on top of the ramp. And we'll see what we have in store for us. What are we cooking, Papi? What are we cooking? Double gas opener. Double gas should be leading towards at least a factory. into that factory base play now we already saw hellion reaper out of dolan in the last game with mixed success we already see that hellion reaper and uh yeah, it would be nice to see it again uh, as for now pili pili he's the one spicing things up okay you have my attention there's that factory on the way. Pili Pili, he's going to be going for his gate expanded to Cybercore into a proxy Stargate, I imagine. Wouldn't be a bad place for a Stargate. The probe is lying in wait, and we're going for our tech of choice. 
Uh, mining, I mean, that's a lot of minerals to mine through, so we're just going to be keeping that probe hidden. Safety, safety cyclone is on the way. Behind this Reaper gets in. It is going to be a Twilight Council opening. Dolan does confirm. How does it look like Link? Ooh, we get a surround. Nice surround there by Billy. We got that Reaper. And what do you have for us? Are we going for a Dark Shrine? No shot. I mean, Twilight Council is about to finish. At this point, I think it would be too late for a Stargate. Show us the Dark Shrine. There we go. Twilight Council is now done. And the Dark Shrine is going to be proxied. Okay, so I was just waiting for the tech here. Dark Shrine is confirmed. And Dolan, he's on his two base setup, getting into his natural expansion, now working towards his second Rax. Now working towards his third Rax. Ooh, okay. So, on the one hand, we saw this in game number, was it game number three? Game number two? Where this looks like a very committed two-base build here out of Dolan. Where we have such a big prioritization of bio, of tank production, of just units in general. The downside here is that the starport is delayed, which means the Raven is going to be very delayed. Um, we do have a natural, we do have a detection available to us, but uh, we have to be very careful with how we want to use it. Because Dolan has not seen enough to tip him off as to what's going on. There we go. The Dark Shrine is about to finish. The Invisible Man, will it be enough? Dolan moving out a little bit to try to scout. Greens are amassing. There we go. DTs are coming in. Do we do we see the warp in, though? Uh, we, I mean, we spot the Dark Shrine. Big scout here out of Dolan. We evacuate the natural. We're walling up. We do manage to wall up repairs here on that deeper wall. We got one SCV here at the natural base. We're going to get a second SCV as well. And this is getting damage done. This is getting damage done here. We're just waiting for the scan. Even if we have a scan, we need two of them to deal with all these Dark Templar. And again, behind this Pili Pili, happily mining on two bases. Show us the scan. No shot does escape. No, uh, the, Dark T the Dark Templar does manage to escape. Ay ay ay! Turrets are going to be on the way. Still no starport. Still no medevac. Dolan having a very hard time here, losing even more SCVs. Forced to scan, but DTs they're coming back. They're trying to come back in. All right, we'll finish in time. Well, he will survive. Will manage to survive, but... Ah, again, he has such a big deficit here. Uh, at this point, it may just be worth pulling the boys. And we may just be forced all in. Things are looking dire for Dolan. But again, we have Concussive Shell on the way. We do have at least Stim. No combat shields yet. Looks like we're going for an Adam Soul for Medivax. And Pili Pili is in the driver's seat. Like, he's got such a very nice economic lead and economic advantage. It's going to be on Dolan to try to bounce back. To try to come in with some drop play. Pick off a couple of probes here and there. This guy's someone else. We do shade in. We get the tank. Oh, it's close. We don't. Whew. Don't quite get the tank. Here we go. Pili Pili is pushing. He has his own army now. Immortals, Archons, Prism is on the way to reinforce. Charge is finishing up. We'll see if we can keep up. 
Here we go. Pili Pili getting ready to collapse. Do you have a good amount of wind winds? Do you have a, some tanks as well? This is a pretty entrenched position. Uh, Pili Pili, if he tries to break this, he might overextend. He doesn't need to, to be honest. Like, Pili Pili, he's on three bases. He can just expand, take a fourth, take up even further. He doesn't have to go for the kill. But he's tempted. There we go. Prism into the main. Green army rotating over. Prism is forced out. We are going to be forcing some cancels on these bunkers. And here we go. This is how push forward. Big mind shots going off. Not a bad initial trade here from Dolan, but at the same time, Zealous are wreaking havoc in the main base. SCVs are going down. Oof. Yeah, it's just a little bit too much. There it is. Storm is now on the way. That's the one thing we were missing. Some kind of splash damage, whether it's Colossus Disruptor or Storm. Storm is now on the way. Really backing up, respecting the position of Dolan. Does understand how difficult it is to break this. Pili Pili doesn't want to throw away the game. Does pull back. As drop moves out, Prism has been spotted. Race back home. And there we go. As Zolan as he moves out to uh, sorry, I was just clearing my mind a little bit. <laughs> because it's been a long cast, Bobby. It's been it's been over twelve hours. I uh I'm I'm holding on, Bobby, I'm holding on. We're going for scans, we're looking for fourth bases. It's three base versus two. Storm is done. Big storm here on the High Templar. Yeah, there it is. The storm takes down three of those High Templar. That's the Duke collapse here on the Duke collapse here on the army. We just shot the Sim City. Prism into the main. Zealots they get warped in once again. Billy really, really forcing his way up into the natural base as well. Ooh, big storm on the ramp. Oh my god. So many Marines, they just take the storm to the face. Trying to pull back. Tank goes down. Zell is still wreaking havoc in the main. Now, Dolan has a comparable army here to Pili. Unironically, like he has a pretty comparable army. So let's kill the prison. Does pull back, does defend. Third CC is done. Gonna be able to land on location. And uh, yeah, the armor supplies are similar. We could see Dolan try to go for an all in, or I guess he might just try to go for a longer macro game. The problem with that is that, I mean, again, Storm is now done, and we have Colossi on the horizon as well. That prison press doesn't end. Doesn't end, but the prison does just dip back and forth between the main base and the natural. Likewise, bunkers are finishing. Bunkers are finishing here. The prison does get sniped. Good feedback here on the ghost. Ooh, big storm as well. Oh, we take the storm to the face on those marauders. Oh, that <laughs> was the name Vicious High Templar. Those get taken out. See here, Pili taking the center base. Does take the center base. Now Pili does have the supply lead. Does have the supply lead here. Okay, so we're gonna collapse on this. Again, Dolan has been an uphill battle trying to recover in this game. Yeah, 
really. Oof, another big storm. Another massive storm does connect. Pili Pili pulling back. Um, he has yet to transition. Like, honestly, Pili Pili, he could take another base. If he really wanted to, he could take another base. He could probe up to, like, 70 and take into Sky Toss. Instead of going into that sky, just we don't need it. Not required here, as he does have enough of a lead. Deeks and EMP on some of these archons. The boys are being pulled. Dolan, he's on his last legs, pulling every single worker here. But we have plenty of Colossi, we have plenty of firepower. Peely Peely, he's going to be able to clean this up. He's going to be able to shut this down. And GG gets called. Peely Peely fighting back here does force the ace match. GG, let's go. We're going all the way to game number five. Oh. Here we go. Again, that was just a really rough start for Dolan. Essentially, as he was getting into a very aggressive build, remember, winding it back, we had a Dark Templars. We had a DT opener, and we just were woefully underprepared. It did game-ending damage, killing so many SCVs, avoiding scans, disrupting the build of Dolan, and... Uh, from that moment, from those DTs, it, it was, it was the protos. It was Pili Pili in the driver's seat. It was Pili in the driver's seat, and with that, now we're tied up. We're tied up in our series. And now we have to figure out how or who does win it all. Who does claim it all here? As a reminder, this is going to be the final game of this qualifying match and the final game of the broadcast. Um, I it's it's been a long day here, and I'm I'm running out of steam. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm I can feel it, Bobby. I can feel it. I'm running out of steam here. I'm on my last legs. Uh -huh. I, I'm I'm coming at the end of my rope and. Let's go. I, I, I'm I'm so torn as well here. I mean, we've made it to the ace match, which on the one hand is a great thing, right? Like, I'd love, I'd love to see ace matches. I want this to go the distance and go back and forth. But the pressure is on, and Dolan, uh, my boy, me papi, he has to make it through. He needs to make it through. Automass is all he needs. Can he pull it off? Can he make it into that main event? He is so, so close. As our next map is going to be on Alkione. Ooh. Okay. Here we go. Players are ready and we're loading in. Players are ready and we are loading in. Game. Numero cinco. Let's go. Let us go. As soon as we switch, scene, switch scenes, I'm doing some I'm stretching. Okay, here we go. The final game of the series, the final game of this best of five. It all ends here. It all ends on Alkione in game number five. And spawning in the bottom left-hand corner, we have our American Terran player. He's one of our own. He is one of the cranky ducklings. The blue Terran player, Dolan. One more is all he needs. And spawning in the top right-hand corner, we have this one. We have the American Protoss player, the red Protoss, representing Genesis Gaming. It is Pilly Pilly. Pouring his way back into this, forcing the ace match. Oh boy. Pili, he only needs one more. So does Dolan. The final game to determine who will qualify, who will make it through, and who gets knocked out. Has to try again next season. In however, however many months that is. Next season yet to be confirmed. We'll see how we do settle into this. 
Ooh, for now, once again, double gas opener out of Dolan is going for a full wall here at the top of the ramp. So he's going to be keeping Pili Pili in the dark as to what's going on. We spoke about it, but this double gas opener can or is going to be leading into a faster factory. This could lead into Hellion Reaper. It could lead into early Cyclones. It could even lead into a committed Widowmine drop. And we actually haven't really embraced any kind of Widowmine drop at all so far in this series. Which is surprising because Widowmine drops are so much more commonplace, at least in the standard Terran vs. Protoss. But these games, they have been anything but standard. Anything but standard. Uh, I am with you, Papi. I am with you. Uh. <laughs> I appreciate your casting like stay with us. I, I'm doing my best. I've been doing my best. Probe is gonna be hunted down by said Reaper. He's gonna shut it down. Behind this, Pili Pili just going for his gate expand into the cyber core. Meanwhile, we are setting up for a factory into command center. So a relatively economic opener here out of Dolan. I mean, of course, it is more aggressive with a faster factory. Going for a cyclone first. And we have our take of choice once again, Twilight Council. Interesting, based on what we've seen so far, Pili Pili, he's been avoiding Stargate openers and avoiding Robo-based openers. It's been purely Twilight Council-based play from Pili Pili. Does seem to enjoy it that much more. Embrace it. Reaper is being forced back. I believe Dolan was unable to scout. Yes, he has yet to confirm the tech of choice here from Pili. And we are going, ooh, okay, for a factory expand into, once again, another faster factory. Sorry, another faster Rax. Second Rax is on the way. And we'll keep an eye out for a third Rax. It looks like this is another two ace push. Another committed build here from Dolan. As, yep, there it is, third Rax. Third Rax is on the way now. As a reminder, Dolan attempted to get into this build last game, but he was denied because of the DT Harass. The Dark Temple Harass did far too much damage, basically end of the game, and Dolan just wasn't able to really hit his stride and hit his timing. So this build fell on its face. Now, there are no Dark Templar. There is Blink, and it is going to be three-gate Blink here from our Protoss player, so very safe play here, very safe build. We'll be granting Pili Pili map control. But Dolan is going to be staying here on his 3 rack setup. And eventually, going to be moving out across the map. Oh boy. The upgrades are on the way. We have Stim. Uh, the way this works, uh, as I said before, this can lead into one of two ways. We could pull the boys with this. We could just skip the starport, pull the boys, and go for a two-base all-in. Or we could throw down the starport, throw down a third CC, or towards a longer game, but just still be quite committed with this push and look to deny the third, for example. Does not have to be an all in. As back across the map, you have a. You have a bay on the way. Okay, interesting. There we go. It is going to be that three-gate blink. Now we're getting into our bay. Now we're getting into our third base. It's a very safe play here out of Pili Pili with the faster bay. That's going to be leading into Glossy production. But Pili Pili, he needs to control this Zelnaga. I'm a little bit surprised that no one has it, by the way. Uh, but the, the Observer does scouts. I'm getting so much deja vu. So much deja vu here. To, what was it, game three? When Dolan did this build and won with it. Here we go. Colossus is on the way. Move out is coming. Dolan, he's going to be pushing here on the right-hand side. Looks like Hallucination does want the move out. Does want the move out in the end. You can see Pili Pili trying to meet the army in the center of the map, trying to slow it down with his Blink Stalkers. Nice moves here out of Pili. Gets a Marine. Every Marine counts. Behind. We're going for the tanks. 
so far. Good position here out of Dolan. Does see jump. He's going for the he's going for the third base. He does get within range. And the third is gonna go down. Pili Pili does have the Colossus, but he cannot push in. And that is all we need to do. Dolan doesn't have to keep pushing. Oh, he thinks about it though. Oh. Does think about it. Behind this third, he sees now on the way for Dolan. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We're backing off. Very mature decision. Very mature here out of Dolan. We do retreat instead. We back off. Meanwhile, we do see Pili Pili trying to gain map control here, but he runs into some tanks, takes some big uh, shots, shots to the face. Big volleys, even. Trying to do connect behind this third CC, pushing up, getting into the Rex of our two base setup. Soon to be three. And the game is going to calm down from here. We're, we're just calming things down here. Pili Pili is saturating his new backup third base. Close, uh, extend the balance is finishing up. We have the, the Temple Archives on the way for Storm, for Archon production. Ooh, Dark Shrine being thrown down as well, just to spice things up even further. There we go. Never mind, Pili Pili. You know what? He's not really one for things that are too spicy. Mike seems at times a little bit more bland as he's calming things down, you know. Settling for three bases. That's so once again, he's going to be moving out. Dolan does spot it. It's going to ahead of time. And again, this is just a very tense moment overall. Now, the soup does lie. Even though Dolan, he is ahead in army supply, Pili Pili has a more efficient army, and he can win a fight. And definitely win a fight. There we go, Prism, poised to dive into the main. Oh, the main base is looking exposed for Dolan. We've seen this War Prism wreak havoc in the main base in the past. Pili Pili getting ready with his main force as well. Looking down those rocks. Are we aware? Looks like he is. Yeah, we have the minefield set up. Zell's dropping into the main. We do manage to get a couple of SCVs, and we're going for more. Ooh, a lot of work is going to be going down. Late reaction here out of Dolan. Five SCVs. Animal smiting time. And a turret. Let's see damage dealt here. That's, yeah, that was five workers. That was a turret for one zealot. Well worth it here for it. Pili Pili. Well worth it. And now we're getting into a second robo. We're getting into mass disruptor production with two disruptors or two two robos. Oh, the prism is going to get caught out. Good news here, Adapili. Does it take down that prison? That is going to allow Dolan to be that much more secure here in his base. This Pili Pili takes a fourth base. Just going to be chilling out. And for the first time this series, we're getting like a back and forth mid to late game. Like, we've seen longer games before, but usually when we've seen these longer games, like there's been a player with a clear advantage um, from the early game. This time, I don't want to say that. This time, I, I, I don't think I can strongly say that there is like a distinct clear advantage early on. Both players had and downs go for the scan see the army do you see the army here so we're going to be trying to tie up to dive on top of this tank they do siege do you siege up Pili rotating around Pili is going to be the first to max out Dude, pressing that time. We are getting ready here for a surround. Zell's from behind. 
If you collapse on top of the tanks, first tank goes down, second, third tank as well. We abandon the tanks and they all go down in the blink of an eye. A brutal start to the fight there for Dolan, losing every single tank for free. Just a really rough engagement there from, from Dolan. Tanks have fallen and Pili Pili is gaining ground. He's rolling on forward. Knocking down anything in his path. Lion Shorts are trying to help. A, a decent connection. Decent connection on that Zealot. But here we go. We're once again pushing on forward. Vikings are what they can. Nova goes off. Connects here with some of these Marauders. And Pili Pili just pulling back the army. The first Colossus finally goes down. But do we have enough Vikings? It looks like we do. We take down both Colossi. EMPs are going to be connecting. Prism goes down. How good are the Novas? Second, second Prism falls. And we, we, go, we, we can chase. We can chase, but uh, we are overstimmed. To be fair, like the, the army is heavily stimmed. Pili Pili is down to three disruptors. He is vulnerable. Dolan, we can push. And he's taking us fourth. Very nice control overall. You can see Pili Pili plummet in supply. Again, he lost all of his Colossi, lost a lot of his high-tech units. Lost a lot of those high-tech units here. Behind this, we're setting up for some drop play. DTs are amassing towards the left-hand side. are amassing again Dolan he is about to max out a do I, I mean he had such a such a great fight he does need to capitalize on it he's gonna do, do so by diving on this would be fifth does force a cancel At the same time pushing forward never goes off doesn't connect oh, big DT counter attack here we go for the scan can we save the base we can't uh, too many big swipes go off, and the planetary goes down. Big pick up here with an Arc Templar. Ay, ay, ay. That was brutal. We're going to be able to clean this up. Thankfully, there is a command center finishing up, so we can just expand right here. But 15 dead SCVs. And Pili is back in this. Quickly in the economy. Sometimes... All or nothing is all you need, and Pili Pili, he suddenly takes the supply lead. Denies that base. Denies that, that mining. They have invested in a pretty large amount of zealots here. Nervous go off. How many disruptors? So eight disruptors, three nervous connect. Okay, nervous go up to four. We have four left. Four purification nervous left. That's still plenty. Zellerar might hit the base. Planetary isn't done. Dolan being forced all the way back home. A brutal position here for Dolan. Racing back. Racing all the way back. Now, if Dolan's able to catch out this army, he's able to, if he's able to collapse on these disruptors, he can win a fight. 100%. Things can snowball in his favor, but the stars need to align. Stars that do need to align here. Army coming in from, from multiple angles. And Pili Pili, have we overextended? Have we overextended? Is every single disruptor going to be going down? Ay, ay, ay. There was no backbone to this army. Purification nervous were just a little bit too late. Zellerombi does take down the fourth once again, forcing Dolan all in. Look at the worker count here. Dolan, he's down to 40, 45 workers. DT's a two blink away. We need some scans. This army's overstimmed. Army is a bit overstimmed. DT's going to be going down. Do we have another scan? We do. Takes out more Dark Templar. Base has fallen. Celeron might continue to push in towards that natural. And Pili Pili, he's got a third Colossus on the way. With three Colossus, that may be enough. I mean, I say that. Dolan, he's got an overwhelming army. He scans. He sees another DT. It's going to slip away. More workers going to be falling. Do we have another scan? Good EMPs. 
Woody and Peace here on the army, and yeah, we take down the main force. Of course, they're going to be going down, and Dolan, he's done it! Dolan, he breaks the main army. He brings it back a very tense moment. You can see how battered and bruised this army is, by the way. And again, Dolan, he lost his fourth over and over again. He's down to 27 SCVs, barely has an economy. But what does Dolan have? He has an army. Does he have a scan? He does. Does have a scan available. GG gets called. Dolan, he barely does it. Who needs an economy? Who needs workers? As he was forced completely all in. And Dolan, he qualifies for the EPT Spring Americas Regionals. GG. GG, well played. ESL Masters Spring. Dolan, he will be a part of it. Gah, papi, gah. <laughs> oh, God. So intense, papi. GG. GG, well played. Oh, my God. I was so concerned. There were moments in that game when... Of course, the Dark Templar, they were sniping bases, workers were going down. Initially, when Dolan lost all of his tanks as well, things were looking a little bit dire there, but slow, methodical play there out of Dolan, able to just approach that in a much more calm manner, able to just build up it towards those ghosts, towards those Vikings, able to take some better fights towards the end, able to collapse on those disruptors, shut them all down. GG. What, what are eight disruptors? What are eight disruptors? In front of a man with gun. Okay, just stim. Just stim and win, pop. Oh. GG. <laughs> GG. GG, well played. And again, to be fair, Dolan was all in there. Again, he just did not have an economy. He could not sustain himself. If he had taken too many losses, that would have been it. But congratulations to Dolan. And with that, two Cranky Ducklings make it into the main events or into the uh, America's Regionals. It is going to be Eric and Dolan. Congratulations. Ah. Congratulations, Papi. Congratulations. Eric and Dolan, they made it through. My heart goes out to Ryu as Ryu unfortunately was not able, was not able to qualify Ryu went down to Rob earlier, and again, it was such a shame that that we had team kills. It was such a shame that we had so many team kills, and honestly, if Ryu was placed anywhere else in the bracket, I, th I think he qualifies. I think he does qualify. Ay, ay, ay. GG. GG, well played. <laughs> Dolan just responded to me. He's like, my heart, Bobby, my heart. Ah. Oh my god. It's pounding. GG. Close series. Well played, Bobby. Well played. With that, I think there's still some other series going on at the moment. Quickly just checking the brackets. Uh quick checking the lower brackets. Oh, I should also announce it. GG. Uh, Maples has qualified over Volts, 3-2. to two. Congratulations to Maples. Of course, Dolan has made it through as well over Pili Pili. It looks like we have two series left. We have Foxer versus Rob and Riser versus M. Canning. I believe if you want to tune in to those two final series, uh, I believe they're being casted by uh, Rotterdam, Pig, and Dave Testa. Uh, let me just quickly double check here. Okay, we have uh, Rotterdam casting Foxer versus Rob. We have Pig casting M. Canning versus Riser. We have, I believe, Dave casting Foxer, because Fox is his boy. So he should be covering Foxer versus Rob. Rob, Dave, I mean. No, sorry. He's casting M. Canning. Okay, so Dave, he's on M. Canning versus Riser. And Renegade X Studios, I believe, is covering another series as well. Uh, M. Canning versus Riser as well. Okay, so most of them are covering M. Canning versus Riser. Only one, only Roddy covering uh, Foxer versus Rob. But uh, yeah, there's still those two matches still ongoing, and uh, yeah, yeah, do do check them out. Do check out the other StarCraft that's going on. A lot of matches are occurring, and a lot of really good StarCraft is being played out. GG. Technically, I could wait. I could wait and try to jump in mid-series if there are more games coming. But uh, I'm 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 done. I'm worn out. <laughs> 
And we just got an update. M Canning takes down Riser 3 to 1. M Canning will be a part of the regionals as well. Congratulations, M Canning. My condolences to Riser. Which means there is only one series left. That is Foxer versus Rogue. One series remaining. Double wins today. Big winnings. Big winnings. Let's go. Let's go. Two of our boys made it in. Any books, sir? Here we go. Uh, and again, with that, we're, we're done for today. It was a long day of StarCraft. Again, we started casting 13 hours ago. 13 hours ago, we started casting the Asia region. Then that led into the European region. And that led in here into the Americas region. 13 hours of StarCraft. You know what time it is? Time for bed. Time for <laughs> Time to get some rest and do it all over again because when is our next broadcast here on the Cracky Ducklings? Uh, the next broadcast is going to be ESL Open Cup Asia. That is in nine hours time. That is enough time to sleep and to wake up and to cast some more. There you go. Nine hours time here on the Cranky Ducklings. See you then, Poppy. See you then. Ah, uh, ah, uh, there you go. So again, if you want some more soccer, we got you covered. Speaking of, apparently in 12 hours time after ESL Open Cup Asia, we have WTL Code A Day 1. Oh god, the StarCraft goes on end. We have ESL Asia into WTL, and that would lead us into uh, ESL Europe and ESL Americas, but I think we're going to be not casting those tomorrow, but um, we will at least be covering ESL Asia. At least that, and most likely into WTL as well. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Thanks so much for the support. We do appreciate it. Exclamation mark. Socials in the chat, and you get a link to our social media. Uh, you can get a link to our social media pages. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Discord. All things Cranky Ducklings. Otherwise, stick around. We're going to be giving another Starcraft streamer a raid. Not too sure who. Uh, most of these streamers are... Most of these casters are wrapping up their matches. Um... We could raid Pilly Pilly. Uh, Pilly Pilly is streaming right now. Who else can we raid? Uh, who else? It's Pilly Pilly. Um, Dave might still be streaming afterwards. Let's see what's going on. Nah, it looks like he's wrapping up as well. I just he just raided Heaven. Okay, okay. Uh, Pili Pili just went offline as well. Ooh, uh, who can we raid? I guess Code Bar? We'll, fi we'll find someone to raid. We'll find someone out there to send our love to. So, uh, yeah, other, other than that, though, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for the support. Thanks so much for the support. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for some useful age action. And don't forget to cheer for the Ducklings as they're going to be a part of the America's Regionals. It's going to be a lot of good fun. Be sure, be there, cheer them on. Ha, ah, papi. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to get passed out. I'm done. I'm, not, I'm, I'm done. I'm still sick as well. I'm going to get passed out. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, papi. Bye. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for watching.